to Charles White for the Cleveland Browns and Vegas Ferguson for the New England Patriots. Uh, Vegas Ferguson was the 25th player taken in the first round. Charles White, the 27th. Charles White, the 1979 Heisman Trophy winner. And for his size, 5'9", 183 pounds, averaged 28 carries a game last year. Ferguson, all he has to do is become a good receiver. He'll be a great back in the NFL. Bob, when you talk about running backs, there's one that's not here today. His name is Sam Bam Cunningham. He's one of four New England holdouts. It's a real problem for the Patriots. They are all clients of Howard Slusher, and people here in New England have pictured this whole scenario as an argument between the uh, New England Patriots management and Howard Slusher, not necessarily the players themselves. Well, the scene is set for the Patriots and Browns. We'll have more of our pregame report from Foxborough in just a moment. We've got lots of football ahead. <laughs> NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League, the American Football Conference. Today, from Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's the Cleveland Browns versus the New England Patriots. Today's game is brought to you by Michelob Light. After all, it's simply a matter of good taste. By the new K cars, Dodge Aries K and Plymouth Reliant K, coming October 2nd from the new Chrysler Corporation. By Sony, who makes Trinitron, Betamax and a full line of home audio products. Sony, the one and only. And by Allstate Insurance Companies. You're in good hands with Allstate. Hello, everyone. Along with former Cincinnati Bengals tight end Bob Trumpy, this is Sam Nover. It's a positively magnificent day for football in the New England city of Foxborough, Massachusetts. Two teams with nine and seven records last year. The Cleveland Browns and the New England Patriots about to do battle. The Patriots will receive, and Don Cockroft has the ball on the kicking tee and is about set to put it in motion. In the deep receiving spots for the New England Patriots, number 87, Preston Brown. Number 83, Don Westbrook, and number 38, Roland James, their number one draft choice out of Tennessee. Glad to have you with us. This game is underway. Preston Brown, six yards deep in the end zone. Down he goes as he hits the seven-yard line. And perhaps a rookie mistake right off the bat, a return of 13 yards by Brown but not a very wise decision. Bob. But a great kick by Don Cockroft, who has been in the league uh, an awful long time, 13 years, and still able to kick it into the end zone. There's the rookie, number one draft choice out of Notre Dame, Vegas Ferguson, starting along with Don Calhoun. Calhoun gets a start. Sam Cunningham is a holdout. Three of perhaps the best receivers in all of pro football, Stanley Morgan, Harold Jackson, the veteran out of Jackson State, and the man they call all-world, the tight end, Russ Francis. Logan will start from his seven-yard line. And to give to Calhoun with a 10, maybe the 11-yard line. Stopped by one of the inside linebackers, Robert L. Jackson, as the Browns go in the 3-4 defense, the same as the Patriots. An offensive line that has needed some patchwork. Most notably, Wheeler on the left side, replacing Leon Gray, who was traded to Houston. But the comment here in New England, Sam, on that offensive line is much improved. Wheeler and Adams both playing very, very good football in the preseason for the Patriots. A gain of four by Calhoun, second down and six. Set in the backfield with Vegas Ferguson. Rogan to Ferguson, and he squirms ahead to about the 17-yard line. He'll be close to a first down. The entire front three of the Browns defense making the stop, Lyle Alzado most notably. Now on this defensive line, you'll notice a new name there, Henry Bradley at nose. This is his first game in the NFL. I would expect New England to try to take advantage of that inexperience right there. Jerry Shirk moving out from defensive tackle to defensive end in that 34 defense, and Alzado always been a great one. And four good linebackers, and that's primarily why Sam Ritigliano went to the 34 defense to get those four linebackers in there, two of them first round draft choices, Jack, Jackson and Matthew. Our first measurement indicates that New England has picked up the first down. And by the run, by the run rather than by the pass. 
Well, I think it's obvious that New England will want to establish a ground game. Most National Football League teams try to do it. It seems to be the watchword of their faith. Ball is behind and put the ball in the air. The air. The Patriots have lived and died by the pass, particularly last year. Calhoun to about the 21-yard line, picking up four, maybe four and a half yards on the carry. John Hanna, the all-pro out of Alabama, now in his eighth year, leading the way. He wears number 73. Defensive backfield of the Browns. Starting a rookie, Lawrence Johnson, second year uh, man, second round draft choice out of Wisconsin last year. He gets the start ahead of Oliver Davis. And let's watch that situation with Stanley Morgan and with Harold Jackson. They may try to take advantage of Mr. Johnson out there. Second down, five New England. Rogan from his own 21 and a half. Vegas Ferguson picking his way to about the 23. Picking up just a couple of yards on play. Robert L. Jackson was there. Jackson missed almost his entire rookie year, number 56. They have run five plays, Sam. Vegas and out. Vegas Ferguson out now. Andy Johnson in, so it might be a passing situation. But they've run five running plays, and all five of them have been at the same spot behind Shelby Jordan and Sam Adams right at Lyle Alzado. And they have replaced their backfield. Ferguson and Calhoun out. Andy Johnson, 32. Chuck Foreman, 22 are in. Both are much better in pass receiving situations. Rogan going to try to run for it. And he is close to the first down. Rogan, who is an outstanding runner of the football, stopped by Jerry Shirk, 72, and Robert L. Jackson, the inside linebacker, 56. He is indicating first down, but we may have our second measurement of the day. Good coverage by the Cleveland Browns. All the four linebackers all over those offensive backs coming out of the backfield. And as you said, Sam, that's been one of the tags against Steve Grogan, that he always looks downfield and never looks for those short receivers. Ooh, it's close. Fourth down and very little bit. The crowd early on, you can hear them chanting, go for it. But Ron Earhart, I don't believe, is about to gamble. Yes, maybe so. Calhoun and Ferguson coming into the lineup. Wow, well, this is really... Unbelievable this early in the ball game. Well, you may have touched on it in our pregame show, Sam, the fact that Ron Harahart, a lot of people feel that he must win this year. Well, if he's going to win, let's let it all hang out. And so on fourth down and inches of the Little Patriots in their first series from their own 27 yard line will go for it. Four defensive linemen for the Cleveland Browns. Dives, and I believe he has it. Rogan took the quick snap. Flag is down. Dived over the line of scrimmage for the first down. Stopped by Robert L. Jackson, but let's look at it. I think Cleveland had too many men on the field, and that's going to get him a penalty. But over Bill Enkaitis, Grogan just does the high jump for the first down, and the penalty is against Cleveland. And that's two first downs for New England, all on the ground. They have yet to throw it, and last year, that's all they did. Well, that's an interesting commentary. Let's listen to our referee here, Bob McElwee. 12 men out on the field against the defense. First down. Well, you got 20-20 vision this early in the season, Mr. Trumpy. Yeah, but my vision from up here doesn't count. <laughs> the guys in the striped shirts, they're the ones that have to keep track of things. I started to say that's an interesting commentary on Ron Earhart gambling in his first series from the 27-yard line of New England. But he got the first down, didn't he? At the 32, Grogan goes back to the ground game with Vegas Ferguson. as he reaches the 34. Clay Matthews, number 57, third-year man from USC, is the first one to make contact. One of the problems with this play, watch number 61. That's Sam Adams pulling out, and Vegas Ferguson, a little anxious in his debut here in the NFL, gets out in front of that pulling guard, and he's got no interference, but still picks up about two and a half yards. That's not a bad picture of a rookie trying to make the ball club. Vegas Ferguson led New England in preseason rushing 149 yards and 38 carries. The young man averaged nearly four yards a carry, and he earned the right to start. Here we go. Rogan over the middle. He's got Ferguson at the 45. That's a New England first down.
Clay Matthews had the coverage on Vegas Ferguson, who by his own admission has trouble catching the ball, but he didn't look to have any problems there. No, and that was well thrown by Steve Grogan, too. He has been accused of always looking down the field. This is one of the few offenses that sets up its passing game with the bomb. Normally, they throw the short ones and then throw the long ones. New England does the opposite. And so from New England's 46-yard line, keeping their drive alive, they have it first down and 10. Ferguson. Play action. Grogan wants more this Jackson. time. He's got in many. Has it to the 33-yard line. Harold Jackson, who needs three catches today to reach the coveted mark of 500, now needs for two. You talk about an exceptional athlete. Harold Jackson at 12 years has never missed, never missed a football game. Good presence by Grogan. He throws it behind the linebacker in the zone, 21 yards on the reception. And when you can do, when you can run the ball, throw short, throw long, you got a much more versatile offense, which New England is displaying right here and now. Jackson comes wide left, Stanley Morgan to the top of your screen. First down at the Browns 34-yard line. Rogan has really engineered an excellent drive. Calhoun, maybe a yard. Stopped by Jerry Shirk, 72, and there is a great story. The all-pro 11-year veteran out of Oklahoma State who almost died, and I'm not being melodramatic, almost died from a staph infection last year, has returned, playing a new position for him, defensive left end, in a 3-4 situation, a courageous athlete to say the least, Bob. Lost 50 pounds, was in the hospital for five weeks, but he told me before the game that the weight that he gained back was good weight. Never seen him look better. Very, very strong. Unquestionably, the defensive leader of the Cleveland Browns. I'll need a great year out of him. The home run ball downfield for Francis, and he couldn't get it. They had double coverage on the big tight end. Lawrence Johnson, the number flag is down. A penalty marker back of the line of scrimmage. Darden and Johnson were both there. The pass intended for the big tight end, Russ Francis, and this may be a holding call against New England. Al Sato was in there rather quickly, and he's across from Dwight Wheeler, number 62 of the New England Patriots. May have been a uh, two-point takedown here. <laughs> but you would rather take the guy down and get 15 yards than have Steve Grogan end up on the uh, sideline for the rest of the season. Would you not, Sam? I would. So the walk-off of 10 yards, the holding call, and here's our referee, Bob McElwee, to tell us exactly whether or not it was Wheeler, as we suspect it was. Number 62, on the offense. I think we better quit here, Bob. You're two for two. <laughs> so a costly penalty for the Patriots. They'll go second down. The ball now spotted the 44-yard line of Cleveland. All right, now this is the situation where we're going to see what kind of offense New England is going to have. Last year they would have gone for the whole thing. Really, all they have to do is get half of it back, about 12 yards. Browns go with four down linemen, Elvis Franks, number 94. Jackson is out, and new running backs are Johnson and Foreman. And he dumped it to Chuck Foreman, who couldn't hold it in the flat. And yes, if this seems strange to you and you hadn't heard about the offseason deal, Chuck Foreman is indeed a member of the New England Patriots coming over from the Minnesota Vikings for a 1981 draft choice. Another one of the acquisitions during the offseason for New England. He also weighs about 215 pounds. And last year, uh, he was dying in Minnesota and played at about 230. So It'll be third down, and Grogan now needs a big play with 20 yards to go for the first down. The ball is spotted on the Browns' 44-yard line. New England with excellent ball control. They took the opening kickoff, marched to the 34, now have it in the 44. Grogan in trouble. Throws it in the intercepted by Lawrence Johnson. And Grogan just threw that one up for anybody. Alzado had great pressure on the New England quarterback, and the second-year man out of Wisconsin came up with the interception. He was about to go down here, Sam. I'm not really sure I like his choice, but the ball, the trajectory of the ball was changed. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage by someone. I think it's 91 Bradley. Just, well, no, he didn't touch it. He did throw it up for grabs. Need a little more discretion than that as quarterback, but first series, they held the ball for almost seven minutes. They didn't score, but that's a good start for New England. And so following the interception by Lawrence Johnson, the Cleveland Browns go on offense for the first time today with that young man at quarterback. 28 touchdown passes for Brian Seif in 1979. He has Mike Pruitt 43 and Heisman Trophy winner Charles White behind him as Rucker goes in motion. And a quick pass to his tight end, Ozzie Newsom. 
the 37 yard line short yardage gain Rick Sanford had the coverage and also that great inside linebacker Steve Nelson all right we will watch we will see this all day long 82 Newsom on strong safety on Roland James 38 out of Tennessee the first round draft choice of the New England Patriots he has no game experience at strong safety I think Cleveland's going to pick on him all day so a gain of seven, second down and three straight up the middle with the ball is Mike Pruitt to the 45-yard line. A first down for the Cleveland Browns. John Zamberlin, second-year man out of Pacific Lutheran, is the man who made the stop, but there was an incredible ball carrier in 1979, 1,294 yards for Mike Pruitt, a former number one draft choice out of Purdue who really came into his own. Took him four years to break into the starting lineup. And that uh, we must give credit to Sam Reticliano telling Mike Brody he's too good to be on the bench. Absolutely. He instilled tremendous confidence in that young man. So just shy of the 45, they shift into the eye formation. Here's a quick pitch down to Charles White for a yard at the most. Tripped out of bounds. First ever carry in the National Football League for the Heisman Trophy winner out of Southern California. Raymond Claiborne was there to meet him. He is the fourth Heisman Trophy winner to be under contract to the Cleveland Browns. This guy, for his size, as we said in the pregame show, only about 5'9", 183 pounds, but he carried the ball on average of 28 times a ball game for the USC Trojans over the four-year period. And we do have an injury on the play. Sugar Bear Hamilton coming off to the sideline. And you've seen a flash of it. Now I'll give you the details. Terry Bradshaw to Sidney Thornton, 29 yards, a minute 44 seconds into period number one. The Steelers lead Houston 7-0. Steve McMichael has replaced Ray Hamilton at nose tackle with second down at 10. The Browns from the 45-yard line. Pro set formation. The right run a broken play. By Steve Nelson and Mel Lunsford. Julius Adams, 85. I think Charles White forgot an assignment there with all his excitement and his debut in the NFL. That's only natural. That's going to happen to anybody. St. Louis Cardinals, Wayne Morris, a five-yard run. They lead the New York, New York Giants 7-0 early on first quarter. Nelson comes out. Prentice the prey into the New England backfield. Calvin Hill now as an offensive receiver in the backfield for Cleveland on third down and 14. Sight. Good protection over the middle. Too high for Reggie Rucker. He had him in the neighborhood of the New England 40-yard line and overthrew it. So it'll be fourth down, and the Browns will have to put it away. The New England Patriots start four first-round draft choices in that defensive backfield. However, as you mentioned, Roland James, this year's number one draft choice, has never played strong safety. He is a converted cornerback because Mike Haynes is not here, not signed. Preston Brown in single safety awaiting this kick by Johnny Evans. He was seventh in the National Football League last year in punting, an average of a little over 41 yards. Good snap from center, and Evans gets off a high punt. Brown from his 15-yard line. Trying to get outside, 24-yard line and dragged down from behind by Dino Hall, little number 26. A punt of 44 yards, a return of nine. And the Patriots have it back on offense for the second time in the game. We are still scoreless from Foxborough. Sam Nover, Bob Trumpy, back in Foxborough. The football player, could you tell? Nice to be back with you again this year, Paul. Uh, it's always nice to be in the booth. I'd fly home without headaches. <laughs> the New England Patriots have had the better of the play so far. Early going first quarter, the Cleveland Browns on a pass interception by Lawrence Johnson stymied a New England drive. The Patriots have it back again with Drogan from their own 25-yard line. And Vegas Ferguson, the rookie out of Notre Dame, picks his way to the 30, picking up five yards, and I like the way he moves. Great agility. He's one of those running backs that when he runs the football, it doesn't even appear that his feet are touching the ground. He kind of glides along the surface. He also has a chance to learn a great deal from a former great running back. Chuck Foreman with Minnesota now in the twilight of his career, but he can teach Vegas Ferguson an awful lot in a hurry. Absolutely. Second down and five. 5.50 to go in a scoreless first quarter from Foxborough. Two high-scoring offensive oh, machines have yet to score. Ferguson for a couple of yards. At the bottom is Clarence Scott, number 22, now in his 10th year out of Kansas State. The strong safety 
So it'll be third down and about two to go for New England. All right, one of the things we want to watch today is this young nose man, 91, on a real veteran, Bill Enkaitis at center. Well, Enkaitis wins that one. He wins it badly, but I do think Bradley gets over there to get an assist on the tackle. Good hustle by uh, Bradley, the young man out of Alcorn State, second year. He was a free agent. Third down and three, four down linemen for the Cleveland Browns. They'll bring in Elvis Franks, a rookie out of Morgan State. Foreman and Johnson are the split back behind Rogan. Good for Johnson. Has all day, has a man wide open for the first down. It's Andy Johnson, and out of bounds he goes. Great. Chuck Foreman, I take it back, number 22 and not 32. So the former Vikings great Chuck Foreman comes up with a big reception of first down for New England. And can this guy catch the football? Remember the years he played with Fran Tarkenton? What did he catch? 80 passes one year. Good route runner and also sure hands. And that's good enough for a first down, and that's something that the New England Patriots need and need desperately. And I think, Bob, by Grogan's own admission, he likes to go long. He says it's very tempting when you look deep. Here's the score. The Bears get a field goal. They go on top of Green Bay 3-0. Bob Thomas, 42 yards out. Grogan is very tempted to go long with great outside receivers, but he's going to have to be more disciplined. around midfield. Lawrence Johnson knocked him out of bounds, but that should be good enough for another Patriots first down. The roadrunner, absolutely the most exciting receiver there is in the game today. Last year, 22.8 yards per catch, and he just flat out ran Clay Matthews to the sideline there. That's why those defensive backs are backing up from the, from the, the opening gun. There are some people who believe that Stanley Morgan might be the best wide receiver in pro football, and you can include Lynn Swan and John Stallworth and Drew Pearson, and they base it on the fact that he has a high ratio of touchdown receptions for the number of catches he makes. 12 on the catch here. Crawley to about the 42-yard line. As I was saying about Morgan, a guy catches 44 passes, Bob, and 12 of them are for touchdowns. That's a tremendously high ratio. I agree with you, Sam, but it also helps to have Harold Jackson on the other side and Russ Francis in the middle. Because nobody can really pay attention to any one of those three receivers. The other two will kill you. Well, while we were talking about Morgan, Mr. Calhoun uh, picked up eight quick yards. So it's second down and two, and the Patriots have moved the ball almost at will up and down the field, but they have no points to show for it. 4.15 to go in the scoreless first quarter. Reverse. Reverse to Harold Jackson. Steve Grogan with the block. And Grogan indeed was leading the way along with Len Titus, and he reaches the 34-yard line. That'll be a New England first down. The lead blocker on this reverse was none other than that gentleman right there, 14. First to Ferguson, then to Harold Jackson. And if, I'm sure our camera crew will pick up this stunning block by Steve Grogan. Now you can't quite pick it up, but he was the lead blocker. And a very versatile offense showed, shown already by the New England Patriots. Go from the 29-yard line. Grogan gives to Calhoun, who cuts it back. Trying to reverse his field. Calhoun's going to of running there. The crowd is really enjoying this. Sam, you mentioned that New England so far has controlled the ball, but they have no points. But what they're doing is keeping a very, very potent offense off the field. Brian Sipe and uh, everybody else has no chance to score if you don't get on the field. A good foot race here. Calhoun against Clarence Scott. And they're playing with a great deal of enthusiasm right now. Well, ostensibly a backup running back. Don Calhoun is the fourth leading rusher in New England history. He's got 29 yards in five carries. And Mosey Tatuku replaces him now in the backfield. Along with Vegas Ferguson. Tatuku wears number 30. And it's Ferguson getting the call. Cuts it up to the 28. Picks up four. Quick yards. And the New England running game is back, folks, at least early on in the first quarter with three minutes to go. Great patience shown by Steve Grogan, who is, like last year, calling all of his plays. And I do think that he wants to establish that we're gonna use all 11 players on this football team and not just throw it down the field to Stanley Morgan. I liked your point earlier about while New England hasn't scored, they have kept the Cleveland offense off the field. And that is the name of the game, and that's why possession football is so important against any good offensive team. They've had the ball for 12 minutes out of this first quarter. Oh, oh it's a two fell down as he took the handoff from Grogan. 
I don't know that he would have gotten a lot farther. Robert L. Jackson, number 56, was there. I think he just tripped on Steve Grogan's foot. Yes, he does. He just strips his right leg on Steve Grogan's right leg. A nice little do -si do for a loss of two yards. So we've got third down and eight, and now the wholesale offensive change is made by New England. They bring in Andy Johnson and Chuck Foreman into the backfield, and Cleveland goes with four down linemen. Elvis Franks, number 94. Now they go back to the 34. Yes, they do. When New England put their receiving backs in, then Cleveland goes back to that 34 defense. So the strategy, and now Grogan looks and sees that they have made that defensive adjustment, and he calls for a timeout and wants to come over and talk with Ron Earhart. So on a very important third down and eight, New England in scoring position, certainly within uh, board for Atlanta, Tommy Kramer to Sammy White for the Vikings. Here it is scoreless. Two minutes to go, first quarter. Third down and eight for the New England Patriots from the Cleveland 20-yard line. And Grogan back to pass. Has good protection, fires over the middle, and somebody got a hand on it and knocked it down. It may have been Lyle Alzado, then again it may have been the rookie Elvis Franks. But somebody got a hand on it and deflected that pass from Steve Grogan. Uh-oh. Well, the Steelers have scored again. First quarter, Frank O'Hara's a one-yard run, and the Super Bowl champs are off and running again in 1980. So much for Ken Stabler having that pension for beating the Steelers, right? At least at this point. So on fourth down, John Smith out of a Matt Cavanaugh hold will attempt a 37-yard field goal. Cavanaugh will spot the ball on the 27th. And that statistic tells it all. He had a great year in 1979. A left-footed kicker. Gavinoff's placement. Kick is up. It's in that direction. It is perfect. A 37-yard field goal by John Smith. The New England Patriots with a minute 50 left in the first quarter have drawn first blood. The Patriots three. The Browns nothing. Keith Wright awaiting this kick by Mike Hubach, who is the regular punter, a rookie out of Kansas. Hubach, but he also worked on place kicking this week, and he kicks it high and very short. Wright at the 17-yard line. 25, 30, 35, and out of bounds. And Hubach is the man who knocked him out, but an excellent return by Keith Wright. 5'9", 175 pounds. Third year, as you see on the screen. 21 yards on the return, and the New England Patriots through the preseason have had problems with their special teams. And the Cleveland Browns, on the other hand, have had great work out of their special teams. Here's the head coach, Mr. Ron Earhart, whose nickname is Fargo, in his second year as a head coach in the NFL. Speaking of Hubach, he will punt today. Eddie Hare, their punter last year, is injured, but it's no question that Hubach beat him out for the job anyway. From the 37-yard line, the Browns in excellent field position. Mike Pruitt fighting for extra yardage, reaches the 41. He stopped there by Rod Schott, now in his fifth year out of Oklahoma. The outside linebacker and four yards quickly for Michael Pruitt. Sam, it's worth noting that in the first quarter, New England had the ball for 10 minutes and 40 seconds and got three points. Cleveland, two minutes and 19 seconds. <laughs> As you look at the Cleveland sidelines and their head coach, Sam Rotigliano. You know, there's a great similarity between Rotigliano and Earhart. They are both loved by everybody who knows them. And I wonder, Bob, and we'll talk about it as the game progresses, whether that's good or not. Through it, runs right into Steve Nelson. Seven-year veteran out of North Dakota State. Quite obviously the defensive leader of the New England Patriots. But what about that? Earhart and Rotigliano, two of the class guys in pro football, the question is, can nice guys win in the NFL? I, I don't think anybody said they were nice. They just get along with their players. They were both also assistant coaches for Chuck Fairbanks here in New England on the same staff, and uh, including that group of Red and Miller on that same staff. Now three head coaches out of one coaching staff here in New England a few years ago. Third down, five defensive backs for the New England Patriots as Calvin Hill moves into the Browns' backfield. Reggie Rucker is slotted right, and Hill will be in motion. Side throws it complete to Calvin Hill, but it will not count, and he knows it. He's dragged down by Mike Hawkins, but Hill is to blame, the veteran out of Yale. There's some justice in that. You know that? Why? Well, Calvin Hill goes offside, so Sipe says, all right, you go offside, I'll throw it to you. You get tackled. <laughs> and that's exactly what Mike Hawkins does to him. He abruptly 
throws him to the ground. Aha. Uh -huh. Illegal motion, number 35 on the offense. Third down. Good call. And while you look at referee Bob McElwee, let me tell you the rest of the crew, the umpire Al Conway, the head linesman Dave Hawk, the line judge John Everett, the back judge is Ray Douglas, the side judge Bob Rice, the field judge Ed Merrifield. Third down, eight for the Cleveland Browns. They got Ozzie Newsom out wide here, singled up on Claiborne, and they've got Rucker slotted left. Sight. was the intended receiver. Roland James, a rookie out of Tennessee, had the coverage. Great coverage, too, by the young man, and we thought he might be suspect playing that strong safety spot, but in that situation, did an excellent job. So for the second time today, Johnny Evans back to punt it deep to Preston Brown with only 10 seconds left in the quarter. Good snap from center. Oh, almost blocked. Brown will have room to run it back from his 13-yard line. He's got the run. Trying to get outside, and they throw him out of bounds as he reaches the 27. And time has expired here in the first quarter. So Preston Brown puts the New England Patriots in reasonably good field position. A 14-yard return of a 48-yard punt by Johnny Evans. Let's look at it again. This was a low driving kick by Evans. Good pressure by Larry McGrew from the left there, the rookie linebacker out of USC. And he just about got it. So we've run out of time in quarter number one. It's been a good one. The New England Patriots, the only score in the game, three nothing over the Browns. Sam Nover, Bob Trumpy, we're in New England. There's an update. The Steelers have scored again. Matt Barr, a 27-yard field goal. It's a laugher for the Steelers so far over Houston. And here's Don Calhoun breaking off his own right tackle across the 30 to the 32-yard line with Dr. Bill, or rather, uh, Pete Brock replacing Len Kytus at center and Robert L. Jackson taking exception to something that's going on there. And cooler heads prevail. Calhoun not liking the way he was tackled, I believe, Bob. There's the tandem. Watch Vegas Ferguson. Good block on Charlie Hall. That's uh, something rather unusual for a guy who carried the ball as much as he did in college for Notre Dame. And I don't blame Mr. Calhoun for being a little upset with R.L. Jackson. Little leg twist there. He did. He did. Second down and seven. Rogan rolling right. Has all day. Throws it downfield. It's caught by Francis. And out of bounds at the 47-yard line, the big tight end from Oregon. All right, here's the guy that New England, that's 14 yards on the reception. Come on, Russ, get up, Russ. This is a big man for the New England Patriots. If they can get Russ Francis, if they can get Russ Francis to catch about 50 passes this year, they're going to win because most of the attention is paid to the outside receivers. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. Grogan with plenty of time to throw the football. And that's one of the problems that Russ Francis has always had. He gets dinged up all season long, never plays 16 games for them. He's also played at 235 pounds. He's down about seven. We'll be back in a moment. Well, you're looking at one tight end. We've got another one up in the booth, namely Bob Trumpy. On paper, this guy around the NFL is considered to be the best there is, but he has never really played to his absolute potential. And if this guy can get on the field and play 16 football games, and play with a certain amount of intensity and catch the ball consistently and stay healthy, it'll help New England an awful lot. All he has is Bruce Ribs. He should be back today. His replacement, meanwhile, is Don Hasselbeck, who wears number 80 as you watch Harold Jackson go in motion. First down for New England. And off on the end around is Stanley Morgan. Isn't he excited? On about the 39-yard line of Cleveland. This guy can really bring you to your feet, can't he? 14 yards on that carry, and I would imagine that Ron Earhart wakes up in the middle of the night with ways to get Stanley Morgan the ball more often. I don't think there's anybody in the league that can catch Stanley Morgan. He just absolutely outruns defenses, whether he's catching the ball down the field, or whether he's running the, the reverse. Once again, worth mentioning, uh, 44 catches last year, 1,002 yards, a 22.8 yard average. And 12 touchdowns. Amen. Just inside the Cleveland 40, the Patriots on the move again, leading already three to nothing. The Browns' defense has 
bend it a bit, but has it totally broken. Brogan, the chase is on and intended for Calhoun to overthrow him. And that may be one of the vulnerable aspects of Steve Brogan's game. When the chase is on and everything breaks down, he seems to panic a little bit. He threw an interception on a similar situation yeah. earlier in the ball game, okay. and that time overthrew Calhoun, Bob. All right, Sam, you may be right, but Steve Grogan is one of the biggest quarterbacks there is in the NFL at about 6'4 and about 210 to 215 pounds. There is a terrible tendency for a guy that size to run the football. He has been uh, accused and he has been abused by people here in New England of running the football. I think he's trying to prove a point and complete those short passes. And it may do him some harm in the early going, but I think he's probably right in trying that. Second down and 10. Wings it out of that flat. Calhoun in good coverage by the Cleveland defense. Excellent coverage. Clay Matthews, 57, was right there to watch him. And so that will be no gain at all. Again, Russ Francis bruised ribs, and we do not know whether he will return to the game or not. In the meantime, Don Hasselbeck, who had his best preseason ever, a four-year veteran out of Colorado, is in there. Hasselbeck asked to be traded to anybody but Buffalo, Bob. Here's your first quarter stats, and it would seem to indicate only time of possession is the difference, and that's 50-3 right. to three in passing. That's right. A rather even quarter as far as yardage gain. Nickel defense employed by the Browns. Throws it downfield. The flag is down. Hasselbeck goes high in the air, and two markers are down. I think they're going to call it on Cleveland, too. It's Tom Darden is furious. Darden and Clinton Burrell had the coverage, and there are two markers down, and the indication is pass interference against the Browns. All right, you can see what Cleveland is thinking right here. Russ Francis goes out of the game. They run that double rotation zone, and that's a real crowd, but Hasselbeck is 6'7", and on a jump ball, he's going to win most of those. I'm not going to let you say a term like double rotation zone without explaining it. Okay, corners. First down. Okay, right. corners roll up, safeties roll out. Uh, the uh, coverage is primarily the linebacker on the tight end. And it's a foot race down the middle. Grogan pumps to the outside to uh, Jackson and then throws it down the middle. Linebacker on uh, tight end. Interference. Great play. That's the way they draw it up in the foot. I still don't understand it. Well, you don't have to because you don't play. That's right. From the 13-yard line of Cleveland, New England has the first down. And the give to Vegas Ferguson as he crawls to the 10-yard line. Clarence Scott knocked his legs out from under him. And I don't know, Bob, at the risk of being a little melodramatic, Ferguson, the way he leans forward and kind of strides, reminds me a bit of O.J. Simpson. Well, I Some think of the same style. All right, I think most running backs will be compared to someone like uh, O.J. Simpson or Franco Harris or something like that. But he just played two quarters of uh, professional football. We've got to give him a little more time than that. But he does have the tools to be a great running back. Second down and eight. The ball spotted to shy of the Cleveland 10. Brogan. Alzado's got him, and he's sacked back at the 24-yard line. Lyle Alzado and Robert L. Jackson. It was Alzado who got there first. And the former Denver strongman wrapped his arms around Steve Brogan, and down he went. One of the problems that the New England Patriots had last year is that they were sacked 40, they were sacked 49 times. In the preseason this year, they've only been sacked six. This is the first sack for Cleveland in the regular season, the first game, and they only had four sacks total for the preseason. They had 34 defense, so I'm sure Sam Ritigliano is very happy about that. That's the best defense in the world right there. Pressure on the quarterback. Third down and 19. Andy Johnson and Chuck Foreman come into the backfield, replacing Ferguson and Calhoun, and Grogan is back to pass again. Brings it out to Chuck Foreman. And he'll get inside the 20, but not even close to a first down. He's stopped again by Clarence Scott, number 22. And all it will do will set up a field goal attempt here by John Smith on fourth down. All right, in that series, threw it short, with the exception of the pass, down the middle to Hasselbeck. I would expect the next series that we're going to come out and air it out. Get those defensive backs back a little bit. Get those linebackers a little deeper. A little deeper and uh, some of those short passes to Calhoun will get him 12, 15 yards. Let's see what happens the next time New England has the ball. Matt Cavanaugh holding for John Smith, his second field goal attempt of the day. It'll be a 35-yard attempt. The ball spotted at the 25. You're looking right from behind the goal post. It is perfect.
So John Smith is two for two in the new season. Field goals of 37 and 25 yards, taking the Patriots to a 6-0 lead over Cleveland. On that last extra point, John Smith, the leading scorer in the league last year, but watch the job that Matt Cavanaugh does. That ball was a bad snap, and he still gets it down for the kick. Credit must go 50% to the holder as well as 50% to the kicker. Dino Hall and Keith Wright await this kickoff by Mike Hubach following the 25-yard field goal by John Smith. 6-0 Patriots, 10-37 to go first half. Hubach a little deeper this time. He drives Dino Hall back to the two-yard line. Spins away from one tackler and almost reaches the 20-yard line. First contact made by Larry McGrew, the rookie out of Southern California. And Mainly the two starting running backs of these teams, respectively, Vegas Ferguson, the 25th pick, Charles White, the 27th pick in the first round. Dave Logan goes wide right and Reggie Rucker to the left on first down from the 19-yard line of Cleveland. Sight. Wing pass to Mike Crude. He's got a block out there on Nelson. 25 to the 27-yard line. And he'll come up a little bit shy of a first down. Robert E. Jackson is the man who threw the block out there, and it freed through it for a moment. Raymond Claiborne finally made the stop. Sam, we've already mentioned his statistics running the football, being Mike Pruitt, 1,294 yards, a 4.9-yard average, but he also caught 41 pa uh, passes for two touchdowns. This is a very versatile athlete, and I can't believe for three years he sat on the Cleveland Browns bench. Well, he did, Bob, I think uh, ostensibly because he couldn't hold on to the football. He had fumbleitis for the first three years. But he showed him the stick'em counter, and he finally found himself. Threw it to the 30, Mike and Pruitt. that would be good enough for a Cleveland first down if that entire forward progress is allowed. As you look at Russ Francis on the bench, with an ice pack on some bruised ribs. Uh, Russ Francis said in the preseason this year that this was his year. Uh, he's got to overlook some bruised ribs and get back out there and contribute to the football team if the New England Patriots are going to be successful. Run one tight end to another. Four, one. Former tight end. Yes. First down and sight back to pass. A little pressure. Now escapes it from behind. Trouble. Patriot pass. Number 71, Sugar Bear Hamilton. He forced the fumble. He also recovered the ball. A great effort by the nose tackle out of Oklahoma. Last year, the leading tackler for the New England Patriots on the defensive line. And you'll see him on the center, 54. He kind of stays back a little bit. A blitz by Zamberlin. Watch Sugar Bear chase him down. And that's a good call. His arm was not going forward. A fumble. And New England will take, a, take over on about the 12-yard uh, line. Good job by Sugar Bear. Well, and all due credit to Sugar Bear. He just happened to spin the right way. The ball was laying right there after he knocked it free. That's why they got points on that thing, so it bounces funny, you yes, see? Yes, it does, doesn't it? So a golden opportunity for the New England Patriots now to score the first touchdown of the day. They already lead 6-0 on a couple of John Smith field goals. From the Cleveland 12. Angus Ferguson cuts it up to the 7-yard line. A quick 5 yards, and Robert L. Jackson and Calhoun are still talking. They had a little episode earlier in the ball game. Clay Matthews making the stop on the ball carrier. He's got that knack for sliding along the line of scrimmage and then looking for the, the little spot in the defense where he can try to get up through. Very durable back. Good size, too. He's going to help New England a great deal. He stays healthy, but that's true of any back. 6'1", 194. He was a 25th player taken in this year's draft. Rogan turns around and gives it to Calhoun. And Calhoun gets down to about the five. And may allow his forward progress to the four. Stopped by Tom Darden, the free safety, who is one interception away from being the all-time leading interceptor in Cleveland Brown history. He's now tied with Warren Lahr. You know, Cleveland's done an excellent job holding New England to just six points. Well, all the time that they've had the ball and marched down the field, this defense has done an excellent job in the first game that they played in the regular season in that 34 defense. But I just wonder how long that defense is going to bend and not break. Rogan passing statistics on the day. Third down and two. Big ground down for everybody. Rogan rolling left. I don't believe he got the first down. Alzado rode a block out and forced Rogan to run wide. 
and it depends on where they spot it. Ron Bolton is a man who elbowed him out of bounds, but I think he's shy of the first down. Good coverage by the Cleveland Browns. Excellent coverage. Now he's supposed to set up inside Hannah, and now Zato keeps on. And finally driven out by Bolton. I don't, I don't think that's enough for a first down, Sam. I also don't think they gave the Browns a very fair spot on that ball either, Bob. I think Grogan touched out at the four, and they've got the ball spotted closer to the three-yard line. Okay, they're going for it. Russ Francis back in the ballgame with two tight ends. Will we see the quarterback dive here? And if you were with us throughout this ballgame, you know that on the second series, actually the first series of possession, the New England Patriots gathered on a fourth down and six inches of their own 27. This is more like it, however, and more justified. Calhoun. Oh, I don't know. He may have reached the three-yard line. He was driven back by Robert L. Jackson, who's playing like a man possessed. Ron Bolton, Robert L. Jackson. Bolton was also there. And again, it depends on where they spotted, but I think the Browns have done one whale of a job. Browns will take over. The Browns have held. They'll take over at their own. Sam Nover, Bob Trumpy back in Foxborough. A big play here for Cleveland. Watch Jackson come into this picture from the right. There he is right there. That's a great play. That is a stopping tackle. Ambrose and Jackson. Great job, Cleveland defense. And it looks like they had four defensive linemen in there and two inside backers. New England tried to go over their all-pro left guard, John Hanna. A place you'd expect him to go as the Giants have gone on top of the Cardinal 14 to 7. Bill Sims to Ernest Gray for 37 yards. The Browns trail six nothing. They'll start from their three-yard line. And a good run by Mike Pruitt drags a tackler across the 11-yard line. Sugar Bear Hamilton is the man he dragged, but Pruitt with an excellent run getting the Browns out of immediate trouble. Right on Tom DeLeon, right behind Tom DeLeon, Henry Shepard, and Robert E. Jackson. That is a very much overlooked offensive line for the Cleveland Browns, but a very, very good offensive line. We've also failed to mention at any time uh, the acquisition last week of Joe DeLamalure. Five-time All-Pro from Buffalo, who we expect to see in that Cleveland offensive line sometime today. Charles White, nothing doing there. Steve Nelson met him head-on, and White may have lost a half a yard. Mel Lunsford, 72, was also in on the stop. So it'll be third down and a long two yards for the Browns to keep the football. And that's a real introduction to professional football, running headlong into Steve Nelson, one of the toughest tacklers there is in the game, and the defensive leader of the New England Patriots. Ryan Seid just two for four in the passing game for 16 yards unofficially in this ballgame. So he certainly hasn't unleashed that lethal right arm. Big play now for New England to keep him hemmed up. Throw it first down. That was not where the play was designed to go, I don't believe, but he found the daylight and ran to it. Well, I'm glad we just mentioned that offensive line of the Cleveland Browns because they did a job here. And threw it. He's supposed to go to the right, but cut back against the grain. Great job cutting off that defensive line pursuit by Henry Shepard and Doug Deacon. And that's a good six-yard pickup for a first down. And Cleveland is out of a big, big hole. Willis Adams, number 80, last year's number one draft choice, replaces Reggie Rucker at wide receiver. We've got Mike Pruitt with 31 yards and six carries. First down for the Browns, and they go right back to Pruitt again. Stopped again by Steve Nelson. A little bit difficult for Pruitt to run with Charles White leading the way. Would you not think Bob only 183 yards of blocking in front of him? No, 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 no. no. I don't. I don't really agree with that. Uh, if you're a good blocker, size really doesn't make that much difference. Because with the speed of Mike Pruitt, all you need to do is engage the defensive man for a split second, and Mike Pruitt is by him. You don't have to knock him down or knock him out. Just get in his way. All right. Second down and seven. Good time for Seif has a man wide open and he throws to him. It's Charles White, stopped by Rick Sanford, the right quarterback, in his second year out of South Carolina. And that will be a little shy of a first down. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy. We are in Foxborough, Massachusetts, and we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is TV3, WKYC in Cleveland. Four minutes and 34 seconds to go, second quarter. 
6 0. The New England Patriots leave Cleveland on two John Smith field goals. And as you see there, the Cleveland Browns have just picked up a very important first down. They started this drive on their own three yard line. They have moved it out to their 27. And they have stayed to the ground with the exception of that last pass to Charles White. Reggie Rucker now back in there, and Willis Adams is out. As the down box has been recycled for Brian Sight. Man open across the middle, but a flag is down. He completes the pass to his tight end, Ozzie Newsom. Roland James, number one draft choice out of Tennessee, made the stop, but I believe this one's coming back. Yeah, and I believe that's on Henry Shepard, too, the starting left guard for the Cleveland Browns. Good reception by Ozzie Newsom, but for naught. This New England defense is a very, very good defense at getting to the quarterback. Last year, they had 57 sacks, which led the NFL. They had 15 in preseason, and they got people that can get up the field. Primarily, Julius Adams has done a great job so far this uh, preseason. He's back and healthy, number 85. Here's the call. Holding, number 65, on the offense. First down. Trumpy, it's eerie. You're three for three today. You're really watching that interior line play. Maybe I'm misplaced. Maybe I should be an official. <laughs> so Shepard is the culprit, and he cost the Cleveland Browns a first down because they had gained enough yardage with Ozzie Newsom. Four down line with Tony McGee along with Lunsford, Hamilton, and Julius Adams. It is first down at 20 for the Cleveland Browns. Willis Adams and Dave Logan are the wide receivers for Cleveland. Siphon, an obvious passing situation, throws it in the right flat. Flag is down again as he completes this one to Charles White. But another one may come back. Ah, this one's on the left tackle, Doug Deacon. He kind of dragged Julius Adams down. So the Browns have thrown for two first downs in a row, and both of them have had to come back because of offensive holding. And they are moving deeper in trouble. That's about where they started the drive, right? Back on the three-yard line. They're going to end up back there. It'll be close. You know, we talked about this uh, Cleveland Brown offensive line. You know, the highest draft choice they have in that offensive line is a fifth rounder. Yes. All the rest of them are free agents or sixth or seventh round draft choices. Molded into a good one, though. Here again is referee Bob McElvey. Holding offense, number 73. <laughs> First down. <laughs> oh. First down. Gonna have, have to trade you for somebody on the field. Oh. Doug Deacon is the culprit. Don't talk about my fraternity, brother. Let him alone. I'm sorry. Next year out of Illinois. So it's down. First down and 30 to go for Cleveland. Flags down all over the place. That pass was deflected, intended out of the right flat, or left flat it is, to Mike Pruitt. But it'll be an offside call against New England, so the Browns, third successive play in which we've had penalty markers. But I think Sype will be more pleased with this call than he was the previous two. Boy, for an offense that was number three in the National Football League last year, the Browns got a long way to go today to get unleashed. Offside, number 85 on the defense. First down. Nothing wrong with the defensive lineman being a little anxious. But it drives defensive line coaches nuts because they tell them, look, watch the ball. Don't listen to the quarterback. Just watch the ball. When it moves, you move. So the down box remains at one. 25 yards to go for a first down. Side by the gift of Charles White, and look at that tackle by Sugar Bear Hamilton. Wow. Somebody had to miss an assignment there. That would be an understatement. No, I'll tell you what happened with that nose man. In professional football, what happens is they try to double that nose man with a center and the right guard. And what happened was Sugar Bear Hamilton took the left side of the center on Tom DeLeon, and Jackson was trying to make the block, and he wasn't there. We've got an injured player on the field. It's Steve Nelson. We'll return to find out what's the matter with him and more progress of this game in a minute. We expect to see him again, but watch this great tackle by Sugar Bear. Uh, he just fights off that right guard standing right there. You can see Nelson just at the very end of that play appear to get hit right in the ribs or something, maybe a shoulder a little bit. Well, he missed four games last year. You may recall he suffered a concussion and missed four ball games, but he's an awfully tough football player, and we expect to see him back again. Yards penalized so far in the game, almost more than three to one. The Browns over the Patriots. A lot of the 
coming in this series. Two holding calls back to back. Second down, 25 to go. Ryan Sight, play action. He throws it inside of his intended receiver. Tony McGee had him wrapped up back near the five yard line. McGee was the leading sacker of the New England Patriots last year, and he's called Mac the Sack, and he really can line up anywhere he wants to on the defense. This time he was outside the defense. Look at that. Great strength. Just blows in there. And as I said, pressure on the quarterback is the best defense in the world. 3.28 to go, second quarter. The Patriots continue to lead the Browns 6-0. So despite their problems here in the first half, Cleveland is down by only six. Rucker and Logan are the wide receivers. Third down at 25, and he swings it out to Mike Pruitt. 15, 20, and necktie tack a lot of bounds as he crosses the 25-yard line. Tim Fox, the free safety, ran him out. That'll be shy of a first down and maybe a very smart call at that by Brian Sutton. But a great play by Henry Shepard, the offensive guard out there in front of him. Steve Nelson suffered a strained right knee, we are told. Not believed to be serious. He may be back in the second half. Well, that's Francis out now, Nelson out. Two off an offensive leader and a defensive leader that the uh, Patriots can't afford to have on the sideline. Preston Brown awaiting this low line drive kick from Johnny Evans. He almost fumbled it and he held on to it. Good downfield coverage by the Cleveland Browns. Ricky Feature on the tackle. Number 83 was the first man there, so the Patriots, with 3.14 left in the half, will start at their own 41 yard line. An excellent field position. Just a 32-yard punt by Johnny Evans. Not good enough. Not good enough. They need a lot more hang time out of those punts and a lot more distance than that. The spirits of New England, the cheerleaders of the New England Patriots. Here's Rogan from his own 41. He wastes no time in going to the air. Oh, Morgan! He's got it. Fake throws it downfield and he overthrew him. No penalty flag. Morgan's looking for it. Lawrence Johnson had the outside coverage. Tom Darden, the free safety, had the coverage underneath. And I think pretty fair job done by the Cleveland secondary. And Morgan's got the speed to go down 12 yards, fake the outside like it's just a short out, and then go upfield. He kind of had to wait on the ball a little bit. There was bumping going on there, but no harm, no foul. Second down at 10. Minnesota top of Atlanta, 14 to 6. Marshall Harris, number 90, playing defensive left hand, and he just got beat on that play. But he was saved by the linebacker behind him, Vegas Ferguson, the ball carrier. But Robert L. Jackson, who's playing an outstanding football game, covered up for the first year man out of Texas Christian. Tommy Kramer to Joe Sensor, four yards, two Tommy Kramer passes, and the Vikings up by eight over Atlanta. I think he landed right on the football. Him right in the breadbasket, knocked the wind out of Big down here, third down at about seven for New England. Don't forget NFL 80, Bryant Gumbel at halftime. We'll have scores and highlights of games all around the league. It is third down at seven for New England. Four down Biden. Rogan has a man wide open. It's Harold Jackson. Nope, Stanley Morgan. Number 86, that'll be a New England first down. And when you've got a man of great speed like Stanley Morgan isolated on a linebacker by Charlie Hall, it's got to be very difficult for the defense. 23 yards on the reception, and Morgan with great speed just gets between the defensive backs and the linebackers. And there's nobody there. They're covering area rather than person. And that's a good catch for, what did I say, 23 yards? So we've reached the two-minute warning. NFL coming up at halftime. Steve Grogan, 8 out of 13 for 90 yards, but he's yet to score a touchdown. First down and 10 from the Browns' 33-yard line. And the handoff goes to Calhoun. Good blocking. Down to the 27. 
And the Patriots have all of their... Nope, I guess they used one time out in the first quarter. Did they not, Bob? Yes, because of a missed alignment, Steve Grogan coming to the sideline. So they got two of them left. Alzado. And they do not use one here. Alzado made the stop on Calhoun. They've got Foreman and Johnson in the backfield. That is their passing tandem. No real hurry here. A minute and 30 seconds left to get it in the end zone. Second down and four. Grogan, play action. Alzado from behind. And he gets all the way to Harold Jackson who holds on. What a tremendous hit by Tom Darden, but Jackson would not be knocked loose from the football. I repeat, going into his 13th season without ever missing a football game. Totally. For Harold Jackson, he has 497 receptions. Oh, what a hit. What a hit. New England's now taking a timeout. Tom Darden, a free safety, working into the lineup. Now can the Browns hold again? They held on a first down and goal to go from their first down from their 12-yard line earlier. Now they've got Morgan. it. At the 11. Over the middle, and it oh, dropped in the end zone. It was a low throw to Stanley Morgan. And I think just about the time you heard Bob yell Morgan was when the Cleveland defense reacted, and Grogan waited two seconds before releasing the ball. Yeah, he was, uh, I think, his primary receiver was on the right-hand side, and they put Andy Johnson in motion to the outside, and it kind of distorted the defense a little bit. And Morgan was down there uncovered. They may come back with the same play. So it's second down at 10 from just over the 10 yard line. The Patriots can get a first down without having to go into the end zone. 56 seconds and one timeout left in the half. Rogan again. Throws it out of the front and it's not caught by Chuck Foreman as he had it on his fingertips. Charlie Hall had the coverage, and the Cleveland Browns are one down away from putting the Patriots into a decision-making situation, whether to take the three or go for it again. Last time they went on fourth down, they failed, and they passed up three points, or else they'd be leading 9 nothing at this point. I'm sure they would go for the three points in this situation. Going in halftime ahead 9 to nothing. I think they can ill afford not to take the three points after having failed once. But that decision lies strictly with their head coach, Ron Earhart. Third down and 10. The Browns hanging tough. Rogan in the end zone. Touchdown to Harold Jackson. And he was wide open, Bob. And that is catch number 500 for the amazing young receiver out of Jackson State. I say young. He plays like he's a rookie, but he's in his 13th year. Also, his 71st touchdown of his 13-year career. Obviously, the secondary receiver, but Grogan really rifles this one in there. And he is absolutely an amazing receiver. Now holding the ball up, they give him the ball. 500 receptions. That now makes him ninth on the all-time receiving list. And the New England Patriots have gone out in the middle of the field to greet him and give him a big hug. And congratulations. What a great catch for number 500. And Grogan laid it right on the money, drilled it over the middle. There's the extra point attempt by Smith. It's up and good. So with 49 seconds left in the half, in a very critical third down and 10 situation, Grogan to Harold Jackson for the six points. Don't give up on the Cleveland Browns yet, folks. Oh, Lord, no. They that have offense. A, they have a, the ability to come back. Smith's kick is very short. Dino Hall at his 19-yard line. Oh, and he was one man away from breaking it all the way. Brought down at the 36, but Dino Hall, if he had gotten by Steve McMichael, the rookie out of Texas, I doubt if anybody would have gotten him. 19 yards on the return of that very short kickoff by Hubach. They don't seem to have uncovered any great kicker in Hubach, do they? The New England Patriots? Not very deep. Not very deep. Well, that's why they took Smith off that responsibility. Why don't you try, Sam? I didn't say I could do any better. Oh, okay. Sipe now with 42 seconds. Swings it out to Mike Pruitt. And a good defensive play. 
Steve Nelson was there, but I think it was number 38, Roland James, who made the big defensive play as they got his body around the feet of Mike Pruitt. And the Cleveland Browns, with 35 seconds to play in the half, have a second down and 10. New England has done a good job of not allowing the Cleveland Browns to throw the ball down the field. They've tried three or four times, but every time there's been a holding call. Well, you called the, the obvious matchup early on, Bob, but they haven't used it. Their tight end, Ozzie Newsom, on the rookie, Roland James. Threw it out of the backfield, dragged down from behind by Roland James, who seems to be everywhere. Well, I don't think the New England coaches are dumb. I'm sure they realize that Cleveland would try to pick on Roland James in his first game as a strong safety. There's the scoring drive. They have, New England has absolutely had the ball most of the first half. Cleveland has had it very little bit, and when they did, they were counting yards backwards for penalties. Calvin Hill replaces Charles White on third down and two. Actually got both Rucker and Dave Logan in there. Logan is yet to get the pass today. He was their leading receiver last year. Right, throws that one to Dave Logan, who catches his first pass of the day at a first down and stopping the clock out of bounds. And that's Cleveland's first time across midfield. Is that right? Yes. Isn't that amazing? That is incredible. But when you think of the fact the Patriots held the ball for at least three quarters of the half, I guess it's understandable. The Browns just haven't had the football to move it. Their defense has been on the field three quarters of the time. Brian Dumbledore is standing by in New York. He's got scores and highlights of all the games around the NFL. We invite you to stay tuned for that. From the New England 48-yard line, Sykes throws it downfield and a good catch by Ozzie Newsom at the 29. And the Browns will stop the clock with 12 seconds to play in the half. Kim Fox, the free safety, made the tackle. What? Sut excuse me, Sam. What did I tell you about the Cleveland Browns? Don't count them out. 19 yards on this reception. And Ozzie Newsom. They call him the Wizard of Oz, and he is one of the best receivers there is in the game. Last year, 55 receptions, 781 yards, nine touchdowns. And he is someone they will use time and time again. It, Brian Seip, they call this group overachievers. All of them play well, well, well above their heads. They also call them the cardiac kids. If you think this game is over, you ain't seen nothing yet because in 12 of the 16 games that the Cleveland Browns played last year, the games were decided in the final two minutes of play, really the final seconds for all intents and purposes. The Browns have a way of sneaking back into a game that they're out of early. And they played three overtime games, won two and lost one. But yep. they are an offensive team in two games last year against Pittsburgh. Seeing how starving they are on defense, they gave up, they gained 800 yards and scored eight touchdowns and lost both times by 81 points and gave up 1,000 yards. So if they don't score 40 points, they're going to lose. <laughs> At least last year. Their defense has played rather well today. I would think Sam Bertigliano has to be somewhat pleased. But the Cleveland Browns have never lost to the New England Patriots in regular season play. They are 3-0. Lifetime. First down at 10. 12 seconds to go in the half. Sight. Throws them out. Pattern and it's caught. Out of bounds. Calvin Hill. Six seconds left. They are well within Cockroft's range at the 15-yard line. Larry McGrew ran him out. The rookie out of Southern California. But the old reliable veteran from Yale, Calvin Hill, found the spot and stepped out of bounds, stopping the clock. Do you go for one more play? Absolutely, you go for one more play. And this is one of the, this is the primary reason that Calvin Hill is on this football team. A great pass receiver, always has been. Calvin Hill's got to be 40 years old now, but look at those stats. Oh, my goodness. He and Harold Jackson will draw retirement benefits about two days after they leave the field of play. Well, the Browns, I think it's safe to say, have used Calvin Hill the last couple of years as the Dallas Cowboys have used Preston Pearson. Third down, passing situation, great receiver, and if you want to give him the ball, he'll run with it. All right, you want to try to play coach right here? No, I'll let you, though. All right, I think what I would do if I were Sam Ritigliano, if I have one play left, I would run the O, put it up for grabs with Dave Logan. He's 6'4", 6'4 and a half, throw it into the end zone, straight up the field, 
figuring that uh, they may run a double rotation zone or something, but Logan has that penchant for catching the football. So I'd look for Logan in this situation, maybe. All right, I changed my mind. I do want to play coach. <laughs> now that Rotigliano has had a chance to see McGrew matched up with Calvin Hill, I'd come right back to Hill again. Uh, I don't think they'll single up. I don't think they'll single up anybody on anybody in this situation. They'll try to run a zone defense and keep those guys funneled to the inside. I'd look for Logan. Let us see what happens. Six seconds left in the half. Brian Sight from the New England 14-yard line. That's an audible. He's coming with something new. He sure is. Throws it down to Ozzie Newsom, and he's out of bounds at the seven. Two seconds left. He changed the play, did not go into the end zone, but I would think got Cockroft into sure range. Absolutely, positively, three points. I would imagine that Brian Seifen went to the sideline in talking to Sam Ritigliano, Sam told him, if you get this defense and try to throw it in the end zone, if not, then make sure you get it out of bounds, either an incompletion or get it to the sideline. So Don Cockroft will attempt the field goal. The ball will be spotted at the 15. And it's in three seconds. 10.57 for the Browns. And no offense is going to generate any more than three points if they can only have the ball for about 11 minutes in the first half. Uh, 207 yards total, as you see, as opposed to 102 for Cleveland. And good passing percentage by both quarterbacks. I do think that the Cleveland Browns' biggest problem has been in the first half a couple of penalties, holding penalties that really got them back in a hole. But I repeat, that 27-yard field goal, a 25-yard field goal right at the end of the first half, Sam, will probably help the Cleveland Browns' offense. They will get the ball in the second half first, so I do think that uh, Brian Sight might try to air it out. Well, the dominance you talked about certainly is reflected in the statistics. Twice as much possession, twice as much total yardage, but it's only a 13-3 ball game, and the Cleveland Browns really don't get going until late in the second half and invariably within the final two minutes of any ball game. And Sam, I have to believe the defense particularly always being tested. And worth looking again, and not many guys in the history of the NFL have done this, Harold Jackson's 500th reception for the only touchdown in the first half. Grogan looking away. Look at the power of that reception. And it's right on target, the number 29. 71 touchdowns in 13 years. And uh, he wants that ball for his trophy case. Yes, sir. Beautiful day here at uh, Schaefer Stadium. It really is lovely. Miami has just scored. Bob Greasy to Tony Nathan. And so it's a 7-3 Miami lead over Buffalo. The sun is out. Just a few clouds up overhead and a crowd of about 56,000 in the stadium that seats 61,000. So they are not sold out here in New England. But they are a very boisterous crowd and they start early in the day. They come here about 9 o'clock. They're tailgate parties and all, Bob. We saw them lined up when we came to the stadium at 10 o'clock. Here's the second half kickoff. Taken to the goal line by Keith Wright. And he's shy of the 20 before he's finally Buffalo down by number 34, Prentice McCray, 19 yards on the return by Keith Wright. And so the Browns, again, will start in very bad field position. And that... In part, Bob, I think was a story of the first half. Very bad field position for Brian Seif. Cleveland got across the 50-yard line once, and they scored three points. A fellow down on the field. Looks like, ooh, don't be doing that. No, no, no. McGrew, that's a very, very bad thing to do. When you've got an injured player on the field, do not take his helmet out, no matter what the problem may be. Hmm. I didn't know that myself. Absolutely. So don't do it. They're attending to the injured New England Patriots. We'll be back here to Foxborough in just a moment. Spotted off the field under his own power, 13 to 3, our score here in New England. NBC, our regular season opener, and we're delighted to have you aboard. The Browns down by 10, have it at their own 19-yard line with that young man leading the offense, Brian Sight. And he gives on a delay to Mike Pruitt for about two or three yards, but Sugar Bear Hamilton, 71, was there to stop him. Give him a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. And there's a guy we've been talking about all day, the five-time All-Pro Joe Delamalure, number 64, acquired in a deal for what we believe was a future second and third round draft choice, and the Browns believe they stole him from Buffalo. I have to agree. I have to agree. That man will be in the lineup before this year is out. 
called by many one of the best pass blocking guards there is in the history of the game. We may see him before this day is over. He's only been in camp for five days or less. Pruitt again diving. Mike Pruitt, Let's see where they spot his forward progress. Julius Adams, 85, is the man who stopped him. He'll be shy of the first down. It'll be a third down now for Cleveland and about three yards to go. I'm sure that Sam Rotigliano at halftime was not really too upset with his offense. They showed a great deal of patience. I think they still have uh, their real threat in Ozzie Newsom. I believe he's going to get open. I would imagine they use a lot more motion to try to single up Ozzie Newsom on Roland James this second half. Well, their number one receiver last year, Dave Logan, has only caught one pass today. In fact, I think Newsom's only caught two, and Calvin Hill couldn't hang on to it. Coverage by Rod Schott, five-year veteran out of Oklahoma. But Hill is the guy they've gone to in those third down passing situations, but not this time. But you see, what one of the problems of playing New England, they're such a great pass rush team that you really can't call a lot of deep patterns because your quarterback is always getting up off his duff. If you can't protect the quarterback, there's no way they're going to get it down the field. Once again, barring some unforeseen fumble or something like that, New England's going to have great field position. Johnny Evans had a 30-yard punt last time, and he's got to do a lot better than it this time. He's punting to Preston Brown. A rookie out of Vanderbilt. The surprise of the New England camp. Little better punt. Uh -oh. oh, by Brown! And the Cleveland Browns, I believe, have it. They do indeed. Nothing but black and orange around the football. And the rookie made a mistake, and the Browns have capitalized their first big break of the day. Now, this wasn't a particularly difficult punt to catch, except that there is a little wind, and in this stadium, which is not enclosed, it does swirl somewhat. Now, watch this. It bounces right off his shoulder pads. And as I said before, that's where that ball is pointed, to give it funny bounces. It looks like one of the heavyweights got the ball, but this is the second time Cleveland has been over the 50-yard line. The last time they picked up three points, they say Jerry Sullivan, number 79, on the uh, fumble recovery. So from the 38 of New England, Brian Sipe and company go back to work and outside that field position. He throws it complete. Reggie Rucker putting a move on Sanford, but he couldn't get away at the 31-yard line. Also, uh, was it Raymond Claiborne who had the coverage? I thought it was 25 Sanford, but it was 26 Claiborne. And not many people are going to get away from that young man, fourth year out of Texas. And I'm sure Reggie Rucker is happy with that reception. He played for the New England Patriots for six years last year. 43 receptions, six touchdowns. And Brian Seip, here we go again. The cardiac kids, they're driving. We're not even near the end of this ball game. 12.40 to go third quarter. You look at the veteran Reggie Rucker, number 33, now in his 11th year out of Boston University. Coming in motion for you. Second down is three. Oh! And New England got it back, I believe. Rod Schott. Rod Schott on the blitz. 26 Raymond Claiborne had the football, but give Schultz the credit. You asked me earlier what would it be with Charles White blocking. Well, you just saw it. That's a rookie trying to block Rod Schultz, one of the quickest linebackers there is in the game. He didn't lay a glove on him, and he got there the same time the ball did. Well, that's one against Charles White. So the Browns have given it right back to the Patriots and blown a pretty decent scoring opportunity. We'll be back in a moment. Brown's offense, I'm sure Charles White did not look up to see Schott. You see he's surprised. Schott on the blitz, inside, causes the fumble. And New England has come up with big plays all day long. That's why they're hit 13 to three. 12, 24 to go first half. The Patri or second half, the Patriots have it back again. And they give to Calhoun on a dive play, picks up a couple of yards. And some pushing and shoving going on between Robert Jackson of the Cleveland Browns and number 61, Sam Adams of the New England Patriots. Adams, by the way, fighting for his very life as a starter. Bob Kreider, 75, now in his third year out of Alabama, is really pressing him for a starting job. And Dr. Bill Lankitis, the center, is also feeling the pressure from Pete Brock. Both of those backups are first-round draft choices. Brock in 76 and Kreider in 78. They got first-round draft choices everywhere. They, sure do. they stockpile them over the years. Second down and eight and Grogan to pass. Over the middle behind Calhoun. The first really bad pass of the day for Steve Grogan. And he did not set up to throw that football at all. 
And that's one of the problems with a quarterback who can rifle at 70 yards in the air. When you got a little dinker like that, you just kind of flip it out there and it doesn't work. How about Grogan? You and I saw him two or three times last year. We criticized him for being a pouting kind of quarterback, an immature quarterback, not a true leader. You've seen him for a half today. Do you see any change? I see a great deal of change because he's calling about 80 or 90 percent of his plays. He's now 10 of 18, and he's calling it. And the leadership comes from the guy who calls the plays. Five defensive backs by the Browns. Third down and eight. They've got four down linemen. Only two linebackers, and Grogan tries to throw into it, and he finds a receiver, Stanley he's Morgan. He's He'll gone. never get it. Look at that. 67 yards to Stanley Morgan. Steve Grogan to congratulate him. Sam, you just brought it up right there. That's leadership in the quarterback. Don't be so arrogant when you throw the football to walk to the sideline and say, so what? Go down there and congratulate the, the receiver. Absolutely. That's a positive sign. And how do you stop this guy? I swear to you, how do you stop this guy once again behind the linebackers, in front of the defensive backs, and he should be tackled right there. But that roadrunner speed, 67 yards, there's nobody on the field that can catch him, including Harold Jackson, and he's got the same colored jersey on. Well, that statistic is very revealing. Don't forget, here's a guy who caught 12 touchdown passes last year. He's got his first in 1980. Three catches for Morgan today, 102 yards, and the Patriots now take what appears to be a sizable lead. It's 20 to 3 New England over the Cleveland Browns, and the very fickle fans in Foxborough, Massachusetts, are having their own way at the moment. We'll be back with a New England kickoff after this. Sam Nover, Bob Trumpy, back in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Steve Rogan has just gone up and down the sidelines congratulating his teammates and maybe we'll get a chance to show it to you. Although you folks in Cleveland have probably seen enough already. Dino Hall. Down he goes back at the 15-yard line. He's brought down by Prentice McRae, number 34. But if Steve Rogan has grown up in one year, there is evidence of it here in Foxborough today. He has matured now into a full-blown leader. And he's thanking the offensive line, saying plenty of time. He's now 11 of 19 for 184 yards and two touchdowns. One to Harold Jackson and one to Stanley Morgan. He has been up and down the sidelines during that entire timeout and low before the kickoff. And you know, Doug Bedoin, the veteran safety who was cut by the Patriots this week, said there's a terribly bad attitude on the ball club out. Of course, it's never evident when you're winning, is it? That's correct. Ryan Seitz. Completes it out in the flat to Charles White, the Heisman Trophy winner out of Southern Cal. Rod Schott had the coverage, but he gained a few yards on that one. Still Cleveland is having a great deal of trouble throwing the ball down the field. They're getting it out to the sideline, but I mean, you've got two guys out to stop you. Out there to stop you. One a New England defender and the other one the sideline. They're not going to get a lot of yards. And they've got to get it upfield. Before we get too carried away now with the uh, offensive prowess of the Patriots and the success of Grogan, Mind you that the Cleveland Browns have weapons also exactly like New England. This is a team that was number three in offense in the National Football League last year. And you can't find a better trio of receivers than Newsom, Rucker, and Dave Logan. And that's Rucker with a great reception high over his head. Roland James with the hit. But that may be very close to a Cleveland first down. If not, it'll be third down and less than a yard. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New England Patriots and the National Football League is prohibited. Third down and a very long yard. In fact, so long that it's two yards. <laughs> I thought they spotted the ball at the 25. They did not. They go with a double tight end. And to give to White, squirms through, and I believe he got the first down. Charles White, Charles White. squirming to the 26-yard line. It'll be very close. Good block up front by Mike Pruitt, right in front. And uh, I talked to Charles White before this football game and asked him about his size. That was one of the things that computer spit out about him. Not very big. Here was his response. 
We don't have that. Sorry. His response was, his response was that he got the same thing in college. He was there to replace Ricky Bell, and uh, everybody knows what a great job he did winning the Heisman Trophy in 1979. He got the first down. Side play action, pressure again, throws it out of bounds. Well, this has happened to Brian Seif repeatedly today. He looks downfield, and the New England secondary has his receivers covered like the proverbial blanket, and he's been sacked a couple of times, fumbled one time, in fact, and that time threw it away. As you look at the New England scoring drive, that didn't take long, did it? Uh, I think Stanley Morgan took about three seconds of that 53 to get 67 yards, but that's why the Cleveland Browns is throwing the ball out to the sideline. They just, Brian Seif just simply does not have time to throw the ball yet today. Second down and 10, nine minutes to go, third quarter. And the Patriots leading 20 to three. Here's the blitz. White trying to get away from Rod. Showed and he's banged down at the 15 yard line. And Tony McGee says, welcome to the National Football League in the only way he knows how with a head on collision. Well, I guess at the University of Southern California against various colleges, that works. But up here, my friend, Number one, they are paid a lot more, and number two, they are an awful lot bigger. Good catch by White, but when you go sideways, you get nowhere. Now he's losing ground, and that's where you lose your head. Ooh, that's excedrin headache number 97. Well, he showed one thing. He could take a hit. <laughs> I'm not sure they want him to Third learn that. And 21. The Browns back at their own 15-yard line, and if Sykes going to pull out a miracle, he better get to work on it. The draw play to Pruitt gets about four yards, and the New England defense is really aroused. John Chamberlain, his second year out of Pacific Lutheran, with a very, very big play, and listen to the crowd. And then Earl Campbell passing to Billy White Hughes Johnson, 57 yards. The Oilers back in it at Pittsburgh, still down by seven, however. And that was not Bum Phillips on your screen. I wonder if he's a uh, Houston Oilers fan with that hat. <laughs> From the 49-yard line of New England, the Patriots go to work. They lead this ball game 20 to three. And they'll go back to the ground again with Vegas Ferguson for a couple of yards. Sam, what I was gonna tell you before the commercial break about this New England football team, a very talented team, nobody denies them that. But last year they lost to Pittsburgh in overtime. They also lost to Green Bay, to Baltimore, to Buffalo. There are a lot of teams that the New England Patriots seem to lose to when they shouldn't lose to. Uh, when they shouldn't lose to them. They're uh, very talented, and at times they coast, and it always catches up to them. Now in the third quarter, Miami still clinging to that 7-3 lead over Buffalo. Bob Greasy to Tony Nathan, the only touchdown. Drogan throws this one over the middle, and he completes it to his tight end, Don Hasselbeck, number 80, replacing the injured Russ Francis. Francis has not come back except for a one situation in which they use double tight ends. But for the most part, Hasselbeck will be in there. Francis suffered a little rib damage earlier in the ballgame. And the Cardinals now have gone on top of the New York Giants, 21-17. Otis Anderson, last year's NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year, 24-yard run. Great fake by the quarterback, and he bootlegs it all the way down inside the 20. And he fooled the Cleveland Browns completely. John Hanna leading the blocking around the left side, just a simple quarterback bootleg, and a keeper around the left side. Watch the fake. And this was not a broken play. This was exa exactly as it was designed. Wheeler out there leading him. And that's one of the real valuable parts of Steve Brogan being the quarterback, 19 yards on the carry, and he is unaccounted for in any defense when he runs the football. Dwight Wheeler was a man in your picture who led the interference from the 20-yard line at first down for New England. And the give to Calhoun for four yards, maybe five. At the bottom of the pile, number 91, Henry Bradley, the nose tackle. Bob, we talked about the nose tackle Henry Bradley at the beginning of the program. Here's a young man in a new situation defensively for the Browns. Have you been able to judge how he's doing? Well, the way the New England Patriots have run the ball, and they are a gifted running offense, 
I would imagine that Sam Ritigliano has to think about going to that four-man defensive line next week because the three-man defensive line has not done a, a, a job against New England at all. Second down and six. Vegas Ferguson had a great move by the rookie out of Notre Dame. It looked like he was going in over his own center, and he cut it back to the outside and tucked it into a little hole and squirmed four yards out of it. The game of football is really an easy game to win or lose. If you simply control the line of scrimmage, you are going to win the football game. New England right now is controlling the line of scrimmage. And when the linebackers have to stay close to make tackles because of the great offensive blocking of your offensive line, that makes the passing game that's that much better. That's why I say I wonder if Sam Ritigliano might think about going to the four-man line. In fact, he's got four defensive linemen in there now. Third down and two. The ball is at the Cleveland 12-yard line. The Patriots already lead by 17 and get a first down. Remarkable balance by Vegas Ferguson. Don Good, who was acquired from San Diego, was the man who tripped him up, but Ferguson nearly crawled for the first down. Great balance. Good power play, play by New England. Shelby Jordan, also Hasselbeck. John Hogg Hanna leading the play. They're just controlling the line of scrimmage. Cleveland has got to consider going to that four-man front to stop them. They did that time, didn't even come close. And I don't know if I agree with you. They may be blown out today, but I don't know if I'd abandon a complete defense in the first game of the year. First down and goal to go from the six-yard line of Cleveland. Ferguson, ooh, and a good smack from Dick Ambrose, who's been the leading tackler on the Browns the last couple of years. Bam, bam. Bam, bam, Ambrose. One of the toughest tacklers there is in professional football. Believe me, a man has hit me at six feet, 228 pounds. Not very big. A great drive in his tackles. When he hits you, you stop. And speaking of Bam, Sam Cunningham, not in uniform. Three of his teammates, as well as Cunningham, unsigned and unhappy New England Patriots, apparently content to sit out the entire year. Calhoun to about the two, and Tom Darden met him head on there. They may allow the progress to the yard and a half stripe, but that's about it. It'll be third down and goal to go in New England, leading by a score of 20 to three and really threatening to blow this game wide open. I would have to think the Browns must hold here if they have any hopes or desires or dreams of winning this game at all. Well, I agree with you totally. And New England has just gone up and down the field today. And yeah, there's their field goal kicker. He Certainly accurate. He's two for two for today for today in field goal. Third down and goal. Calhoun again. Touchdown to England. Standing up. And he went over Lentitis and Hannah. Well, watch the line of scrimmage. There's nobody there to stop it. He's touched, but he's only brushed. I mean, uh, New England, their offensive line was in the end zone. They had Cleveland bent way, way back. And this is what happened to Cleveland last year. Last year, Cleveland allowed almost 353 yards a game, ranked 24th out of 28 teams, 27 against the rush. They allowed almost five yards of a carry on offense rushing in 1979. John Smith will attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and it's good. And so thus far, it has been a most enjoyable return to New England for at least seven people connected with the Cleveland Browns. Or not an enjoyable return, I should say. Sam Ritigliano, the head coach, the general manager, Peter Hadhazy, linebacker coach, Dick McPherson, Reggie Rucker, Ricky Feature, Ron Bolton. They'd like to be back in Cleveland, folks, because it's 27 to three Patriots. Out and trailing at one point, 17 nothing in Pittsburgh. The owners have come back to tie it, Bob. Well, maybe Ken Stabler has that magic. Wow, we wrote him off early, didn't we? <laughs> Dino Hall from the four. Puts his head into a crowd at the 20-yard line. And at the 22-yard line, is finally tackled, so the Browns will go to work from that point. Don't forget, Tuesday night, major from the 22-yard line. The New England Patriots have taken control of this game. 27 to 3. Two Steve Brogan passes. John Calhoun is run in for another. And John Smith has two field goals. And that one was almost intercepted. John Zamberlin is the man who almost picked it off a deflected pass. 
So it'll be second down at 10, 2.53 to go third quarter. Every time the New England, the Cleveland Browns have tried to throw the ball down the field, that was Mike Hawkins on the deflection. My mistake. Every time they've tried to throw it down the field, they either get it deflected or there's too much of a pass rush for Sipe to set up. And this is an offensive line that last year protected Brian Sipe very, very well. This is a very, very depressing point in any ball game. Many points needing to come back. A little fly pattern almost caught by Logan trying to race down the left sideline. But Rick Sanford, the second year man out of South Carolina, and yes, another first round draft choice of the New England Patriots, is the man who had the coverage. And excellent coverage at that. Right, the New England Patriots have played a fine, fine defensive uh, ball game today. And believe me, when you've got an offense that puts points on the scoreboard like that, the defense doesn't have to play very hard to win. A couple moments ago, I talked about a discontented, unhappy Doug Bedoin who was cut by the Patriots, saying that his team was dead. I, I'd be interested in your thoughts and any conversations you had with Patriots players before the game regarding that, Bob. All right. Ryan Seif on third down. He's got a first down pass and a great reception by Dave Logan, the number one receiver of 79. And a big catch to keep this drive alive up near the 38-yard line. And we'll look at that one again. One of the most deceiving receivers there is. Deceiving receivers, am I saying that right? Yep. In the NFL. Very tall, six, four and a half, drafted in three professional sports, baseball, basketball, and football. He was a college roommate of Dan, Don Hasselbeck at, at Colorado. This guy will fool you, and he'll fool you most times. Last year, 59 catches, seven touchdowns. That's a scoring drive of New England. I will get to Bedoin's comments yeah. in a minute. Okay. We won't let that rest. Logan's got a streak of catching a pass in 25 straight games now. Sipe over the middle, almost one-handed by Ozzie Newsom. And Sipe was flattened by Mel Lunsford after he released the ball, so the pressure that Bob has been talking about all afternoon is still on Brian Sipe, and he is not getting the kind of protection he usually gets from that Cleveland line. Okay, you mentioned Doug Bedoin. He played on this team for a number of years. He was a very valuable performer, but uh, with the draft choice of uh, Roland James, they let uh, Doug Bedoin go. I don't doubt that maybe there was a little uh, depression in the uh, team in the preseason. They were one and three last year. They had a very disappointing season in nine and seven. Yes, but a game like this going into uh, the NFL season will really elevate everyone's attitude. So it may have applied two weeks ago, but not so today. Greg Pruitt, number 34, is in the lineup. There's a fly pass, and it's incomplete. It's headed for Rucker. Raymond Claiborne, step for step down the far sidelines. So it'll be second down. Down the play, Ray Claiborne. And 10 to go for Cleveland. As I try to get all of it, or at least most of it, on that fly to Reggie Rucker. And you see Reggie Rucker, but Raymond Claiborne on the coverage has to lead professional football and balls tipped away by a cornerback. He yeah. always seems to come back and make that great play. You're right. Uh, he's a decent coverage man, but his recovery is absolutely phenomenal. You very seldom catch the ball over Raymond Claiborne. I mentioned Greg Pruitt coming off knee surgery in the lineup. Where's number 34? And an all-out blitz, but he got it away! And a great oh. catch! And oh. they dropped and they don't give it to him. Boy, Newsom had it. But you've got to be able to put it away. Oh, that's and tough. he couldn't do it that time. That's tough. Against Prentice Mc McRae, number 34 of the New England Patriots, and Prentice has played eight years Newsom just straight up the field and look at New England blitzing. Even Tim Fox, the weak safety, number 48. Almost a sensational catch. But it's there's no way to hang on to the ball when you're all stretched out like that. I believe I said it was second down. That was a third down play for Cleveland. So Johnny Evans will punt again to Preston Brown. It's 27 to 3, New England, a minute 45 to go third quarter. They have just thoroughly dominated the Cleveland Browns today. And Brown, it is 25, running laterally, trying to find the wall. Flag is down as he reaches the 45 and out of bounds. But a penalty marker down, and it may be a clip because it's in the area where that might have happened. It's on Bob Kreider, the offensive lineman, and it was close. It was close. He tried to get his head in there, and most coaches will tell the players on those punt return teams, if you're not sure, if you're not absolutely sure about the block, don't make it, but then you're running down there at full blast, 265 pounds. You kind of lose your perspective as to what's right and wrong. Bill Cower, first-year man out of North Carolina State, made the, the tackle, but here it is again. 
Well, that's a clip. That is definitely a clip. 75, no doubt about it. So they mark off 15 yards. Oh. Personal foul. Whipping on the receiving team. The, the applause was for Steve Grogan coming onto the field. These fans in New England are very, very fickle. They have been on Steve Grogan's case for the last two years. And after his performance today, responding with a standing ovation. Well deserved, I might add. <laughs> it is remarkable. And tomorrow, they'll, next week, they'll boo him out of the stadium. We human beings are remarkable <laughs> people. <laughs> Calhoun lost a couple of yards. I think it's almost a game now, Bob, here in New England. I think it's it's become kind of in to boo Grogan when he's bad and to cheer him when he's great. You're well, not part of the crowd if you don't do it. Uh, I'll tell you what, I don't think they're very good football fans. I don't think they're very knowledgeable football fans when they do that. Last year was the first year that he called his own plays. That is a tremendous responsibility for a young guy. He's only played seven years in professional football. How long has he been a starter? Five? I, I think mean, this is only his sixth year. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right, sixth year. But anyway, he is still learning. Look at those, those are good stats against the, the Cleveland Browns. Second down, Vegas Ferguson for a couple of yards. And the Browns defense trying to stiff and deep in New England territory with 41 seconds to go in the third quarter on a moving clock. But what the New England Patriots cannot do right now is relax. And as talented a team as they are, I think at times they do coast. They just let things go, and teams catch up to them. Third down situation. Don't forget that following our game, NBC has a doubleheader for you. Most of you will see Denver against Philadelphia. Others will see Baltimore and the Jets, Oakland, Kansas City, or San Diego and Seattle. So we invite you to stay tuned as NBC Sports brings you more football later on today after this one. Yeah. Third down, first down. Andy Johnson, all reliable. Six-year veteran out of Georgia. Dick Ambrose made the stop, but they've converted a third down play again, and they did it on the final play of the third quarter. Let's run this play, and then, well, we got a moment here. We are in late in the third quarter in Pittsburgh, where the Steelers and Houston are tied at 17. Third quarter, Miami leads Buffalo 7-3. At halftime, Tampa Bay 10, Cincinnati 3. We'll give you the rest after this play. Here it's 27 to 3 New England. Steve Rogan has the first and 10 at his own 25 yard line. Play action. Looking downfield. Has all day. Throws cross field and out of bounds. Intended for Harold Jackson. The New York Giants have now gone on top of St. Louis 31 21. That is late third quarter. Phil Sims, four touchdown passes. Minnesota leads Atlanta, 21-13. Tommy Kramer has three touchdown passes. It's San Francisco, 20. New Orleans, 13. That is late third quarter. And Chicago and Green Bay tied at six. That game is middle third quarter. You are now caught up on all the one o'clock games around the NFL today. And don't forget, NBC's doubleheader game follows this one immediately. Second down for Grogan. at the Cleveland 45-yard line. Another first down for the Patriots. Tremendous adjustment to that reception. 29 yards. That's his 501st in his career. Grogan overthrew him ever so slightly. But Jackson, being the veteran that he is and playing in his 13th year, he went back to the ball a little bit and was not underthrown or overthrown right to it. It also reminds me as quickly as Jackson reacts to the ball, we've got three great reactors in the booth here. Our statistician, Bill George, our spotters, Ron Hobson, and George Sullivan, who have made this an easy game for us to call today, Trump. Foreman to the 40-yard line, picking up about four yards. They are right on top of this game. At the moment, the New England Patriots enjoy a 27-3 lead, and you can do a lot of things. You can rub a lot of people's noses in the ground when you're leading 27-3. And this team can do it by accident. They are so powerful on offense that they can really make you look bad. And I still wonder what Sam Rodigliano thinks about his 34 defense. It has not played well today. It has not stopped New England at all on the rush, and that was their weakness last year. 
once again. Chuck Foreman inside the 35, tripped up by Lyle Alzado. Jerry Shirk has not played very much here in the second half. They've been using, using the rookie uh, Elvis Franks, 94. New England is absolutely beating up that nose man of the Cleveland Browns. And he is a young man playing his first NFL football game. Henry Bradley from Alcorn. I don't mean to single him out, but that nose man in that 34 defense is the defense. If he cannot play, you've got problems. First down at the 34-yard line. Foreman tried to cut back against the grain and was piled up by Dick Ambrose. And the Cleveland Browns obviously having some of the uh, oomph and starch taken out of them down by 24 points at the moment, still trying to stop this New England drive. Well, let me expand on that point about the nose man. I, I don't mean to pick a, on, a, on Bradley saying he can't play the spot, but what he has to do is hold his ground there. And he is at times double teamed, maybe even triple teamed with a running back coming out of the backfield. Sugar Bear Hamilton on the other side of the coin played the spot for several years and is very, very tricky at that nose spot. And it takes a great deal of strength and a great deal of intestinal fortitude to be in there for four quarters. And a good defensive play by number 91, the man you were talking about, Henry Bradley. Good for him. Reached back and grabbed the ball carrier and brought him down. All right, you'll see the abuse heaped on that nose man in this situation. A little draw, just a delay. Bradley that time beats the center, Dr. Bill Lankitis, the New England Patriots team dentist, and makes the tackle. Ah what I call a producer and a director. Right on exactly what you were talking about. Sam Kirschman and Lou Maloney handling all of the activities in the truck, making sure these pictures are clear and beautiful to you back wherever you're watching it. Safety blitz. Third down, and he got it away. First down for New England. Big tight end. No, it's Carlos Pennywell, number 88, the third-year man out of Grambling. He stretched out the body and got the first down at 6'2", 180 pounds. And he comes for an embrace from Grogan. I want to tell you, the Cleveland Browns aren't that bad. They blitz everybody. You see Matthews. You also see Tom Darden coming in. And Grogan has the guts to stand in there and take the abuse. And Pennywell is not about to be brought down. Lawrence Johnson picks up another seven yards. Did you notice how Pennywell came back to accept the congratulations of Grogan? It's almost like getting a blessing from the Pope. Well, let's hope from the Pope himself. Yes. Andy Johnson for a couple of tough yards. The number 56 is one linebacker who's played outstanding football today for the Cleveland Browns. Robert L. Jackson, in his third year out of Texas A&M, is a young man that we told you missed all of his rookie year. He was their number one pick in 77, suffered a knee injury, but this 3-4 was put into the lineup for the Cleveland Browns so that he and Dick Ambrose could play at the same time. And I wonder what the people in Cleveland are thinking now, knowing the defensive needs of this team the Cleveland Browns first draft choice was a guy named Charles White their second draft choice was a guy named Cleveland Crosby who was yet to get in the football game and admitted by many people in Cleveland he's really not much of a player right flag is down but a penalty marker is down that's a super spike six feet seven but I think it's against Cleveland the touchdown is going to count look at him once again, you want to answer the question about leadership? Yep. Right down to Hasselbeck to congratulate him and off to the sideline. Steve Grogan, his third touchdown of the day. Hasselbeck is wide open, and they are flat embarrassing the Cleveland Browns. 17 yards on the third touchdown pass of the day for Grogan to his tight end, Don Hasselbeck. And John Smith trying to add the 34th point of the afternoon for the New England Patriots. And I think you touched upon it, Bob. This has been a total embarrassment to the Cleveland Browns. It can be nothing but. Matt Cavanaugh, the backup quarterback, will hold. It's perfect. Rogan today, 16 for 25, 267 yards and three TDs. It may be a day for Mr. Grogan. I expect to see Cavanaugh next time New England gets the ball. I may be the only man running a major brewery who is a master brewer. In Boston, Massachusetts lies this farmland called Foxborough, and the stadium that you see here, 56,000 to watch the Patriots do a 34-3 lead over the Cleveland Browns at the moment. 
Sam Nover, Bob Trumpy. If you're a Browns fan, we know you're not enjoying it. But we're glad to be here nonetheless. From the 18-yard line, Dino Hall racing down the far sidelines and finally dragged out of bounds. Let me say to those of you who are ardent Cleveland fans, there will be better days. The Browns have a too good an offense to score three points and walk away from a football game. Sam Bertigliano will put this club in order somewhere down the line. Whether they're good enough to challenge for the central division of the AFC remains to be seen, however. One of the best things about Sam Bertigliano is he does not give up. He does not give up on players, games, or people. The bad news is Cleveland has their home opener next weekend against the Houston Oilers. <laughs> From the 38-yard line, Sipe back to work again. He would like to gain some respectability out of this ball game. The pass is complete near midfield to Dave Logan, the five-year veteran out of Colorado. And I'm sure Sipe would like to put a couple of touchdowns on the board before the afternoon is over. The difference in this football game today, Sam, has been the defense of both teams. Cleveland's has been non-existent, and New England's has done an excellent job uh, covering receivers down the field, good pressure on the quarterback. And that's Ron Earhart, whose nickname is Fargo, and I'm sure this week he'll uh, have a smile on his face. Bucko Kilroy, the general manager, will certainly be happy. And both Sullivan's, Chuck and Billy, will be saying, what do you mean, Sam who? Richard Bishop who? Howard who? Who's Mike Haynes? I mean, uh, 34 points? Yeah, we'll go with these guys. On a serious note, I think that's about what the game plan calls for. They plan on going the rest of the year without him. That's the scoring drive. 88 yards, an excellent drive. Climax by the 17-yard pass to the tight end, Hasselbeck. They don't need Russ Francis today either. It's just been that kind of afternoon for New England. Sight, play action. Second down, throws the home run ball. And it should have been a completion because the intended receiver, Willis Adams, had the secondary beat. It was underthrown by Brian Seip. He has often been accused of not having a very strong arm. If you can see, if you can see Brian Seip, he has a, an elbow pad on his throwing arm. And I asked him in the locker before the game what that was. And he said he suffers from bursitis from falling on the astroturf. You'll see when he puts it up there to throw. It's a great thing. So it's just keep heat on his arm. And that's full trajectory. And it is definitely underthrown because Willis Adams, first round draft choice last year, who caught one pass in 1979, rather unproductive. So it's third down and one. Calvin Hill in the backfield for Cleveland, along with Mike Pruitt. And third and one, Sipe's going to throw it. He's got the screen set up for Pruitt. First down and more. 40, 35, and out of bounds. And about the 32 yard line of the New England Patriots. And so on a third and one situation, he really crossed up the New England uh, defense and threw for the first down. I'll tell you what, you got to really admire this Cleveland offense. 20 yards on that reception. This offense was, the Cleveland Brown offense was very, very good last year, ranked third, and yet their defense was terrible and ranked 27th, and yet they continue to plug down the field uh, behind by 31 points. This offense does not give up. From the 33-yard line, Sight throws it one-on-one -on -one to Adams. Oh, and almost a great catch by the number one draft choice last year out of Houston, Willis Adams. He had his man beat, but the pass was just slightly overthrown. Flag on the play, Sam. So this would come back regardless, particularly if it's against Cleveland. Let's see what happens. They're walking it off against the New England Patriots. And Joe DeLamalure is on the field, number 64. Here's our referee. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 52 on the defense. That first would be down. Steve King, the eight-year veteran out of Tulsa, roughing the passer, an automatic first down. As I mentioned, DeLamalure is now on the Cleveland lineup. Wearing number 64, Robert E. Jackson, the other guard, has his normal number, 68. And there are people in Cleveland who think that it won't be too long before he has that number. There he is right there. Joe D. The consummate pass blocker. I'll tell you something. He made the all-decade team of the 70s along with Larry Little, one of the two best offensive guards in the 1970s. Sipe. And great coverage by number 38, Roland James. And that rookie has really impressed today. Number one draft choice out of Tennessee had excellent coverage on the receiver. He has proven us wrong. We thought that would be a very, very important matchup. Ozzie Newsom did a good job to 
make sure that this was not an interception. Roland James has done a great job in his first game ever at strong safety in the NFL. Not only starting a new position, but starting a new career. And we have an update on the New York Giants St. Louis Cardinals score. Jim Hart to Doug Marsh, seven yards. The Giants are now leading the St. Louis Cardinals, 31-28. And Pittsburgh, Terry Bradshaw, one yard run, now leads Houston, 24-17. In the fourth quarter. Throwing in the end zone for Calvin Hill. It's incomplete. Once again, that certainly bears repeating. Bradshaw, one-yard run. Early in the fourth quarter, the Steelers have wrested the lead away from Houston at 24-17. And also an update. Jack Thompson, three-yard pass to Dan Ross. Ooh. The Bengals now lead the Ooh. Tampa Bay Bucks 12-10. Oh, they finally got a tight end in Cincinnati, I see. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm glad you take it good naturedly, Robert. San Francisco still leads New Orleans 23-20. Archie Manning, West Chandler 49 yards to bring the New Orleans Saints close to the 49er. And for those of you who may not remember the name, he has been out of the game now for three years. My partner is former Cincinnati tight end Robert Trumpy. Pruitt scrambling to the 11-yard line. 8.51 to go on a moving clock. And the Browns, as I said a few moments ago, would like to get a couple of scores on. Not so much for respectability anymore, but I think to prove to themselves they can they can score. I repeat how frustrating it must be for this Cleveland Brown offense. A very gifted offense, but their defense gives up so many points. Just all kinds of points. you got to feel like every Sunday, what are you going to do? How We've got to score 35 or 36 points or we're going to get beat. Well, you're right. They obviously did not resolve the problem during the preseason. They gave up the most of any team in the National Football League during the preseason. Touchdown to Logan. All right. Ooh. Ooh, boy, they both ran in hard. And Logan. Ooh, he is hurt. Looks like he hurt his ankle. Rick Sanford is up. He had the coverage on Logan. That doesn't look like it's padded over there. No, I that don't think like it is. That looks like straight concrete. Is it padded? It doesn't look like it's much padding. Let's look Boy, at it he... again. It's a touchdown pass from Sipe to Logan. He really bangs into the wall here. It's very, very dangerous. Good catch. And let's see what he hits. Well, he hits his knee, it looks like. Believe me, that wall doesn't give. Well, I hope he's all right. He's still down on the sideline. Grabbing his knee, that's what he hit up against the wall. It's an 11-yard pass, and the Browns have their first touchdown of the day, but I'm sure, as meaningless as it is, their major concern at the moment is to make sure Dave Logan is all right. We'll return to Foxborough. It's a 34-9 game with the extra point upcoming after this. The world's most advanced. We will anxiously re uh, await the report on Dave Logan. There you see just moments ago he was helped off to the Cleveland bench and obviously needed the assistance as after the touchdown reception from Brian Seip, he ran smack into the wall. And you can see him seated on the bench, Bob, pardon me. Excuse me. Doing a lead 34 to 9. Cleveland just scored their first touchdown but lost in a game like this are a lot of stats. Do you realize that New England has not punted once today? Now that you mention it, I do. That's dominance. Cockroft's extra point is up and it is good. And so after the injury to Logan, we finally get the Cleveland extra point. And it's a 34 to 10 football game with 8.09 to go in the ball game. Preston Brown and Stanley Morgan in the deep receiving spots for the New England Patriots. Don expecting Cockrell. an offside onside yep. kick here. He'll never see the football. There's a shifting position. Onside kick by Cleveland. It's cut. Still loose, and the Patriots have it. The Browns almost pulled it off. Racing down that left sideline for the Cleveland Browns was 89. Keith Wright, I thought he had the ball for the moment. But the Patriots will wind up with it. Carlos Pennywell is the man who made the recovery. That just looks like a Chinese fire drill. Everybody over on the other side. Cockroft kicks the top half of the ball. And it's a little chilly dip for all you golfers. And you're right. Keith Wright almost gets it. But you got to admire that Cleveland Browns offense. And Sam Retigliano, the head coach, he never gives up. No matter if there's two seconds left on the clock, he's going to try to get it in the end zone. 
There's not two seconds left. There's 8.01 to play. Fourth quarter, 34 to 10. The New England Patriots in command. And the quarterback is still Grogan. Surprise. Vegas Ferguson. Let's run the scores down as I promised. Fourth quarter score. Pittsburgh leads Houston 24-17. Fourth quarter. Buffalo now leading Miami 10-7. Ferguson to Roosevelt leaks. Fourth quarter. Cincinnati upsetting Tampa Bay 12-10. Jack Thompson to Dan Ross a touchdown pass. Fourth quarter. 31-28 the Giants in a slugfest over the Cardinals. Also fourth quarter. Minnesota 21-20 over Atlanta. Atlanta got two quick touchdowns from Bartkowski. Fourth quarter. San Francisco leading New Orleans 23-20. Third quarter, Green Bay and Chicago tied at six. You are up to date. Here it's 34 to 10 to England. Vegas Ferguson cut off in the backfield. And an excellent defensive play made by Robert L. Jackson and number 57, Clay Matthews. Sam, an observation, Vegas Ferguson looks very, very tired out there. He's not really running with the enthusiasm that he did a little earlier. Well, we've been uh, given the information that Dave Logan has re-injured an old ankle injury. How long he'll be out, how serious remains to be seen, but it's an ankle injury that Dave Logan suffered when he ran into the wall after catching the touchdown pass from sight. Hopefully, for Cleveland's sake, it isn't very serious. Third down and 16 now for Grogan. I can't imagine why he's still in there, Bob. First down to Andy Johnson. The back out of the backfield, making the reception for the first down. Clay Matthews made the tackle. I'll tell you why he's still in there. The New England Patriots still have 15 games to play. They're a long way from making the playoffs right now, Sam. And the more confidence they can uh, generate with Steve Grogan at quarterback to the rest of the offense, the better off this team in general is going to be. Fourth down, I believe I said it was a first down. It's a fourth down. They came up shy. And the first punt Mike of the day Hubach from running. Mike Hubach. We're 6-19 away from the end of the game, and New England's punting for the first time in the ball game. Keith Wright, 18-yard line. Trying to find some room, and he did not. Ran out of bounds at about the 20. Run out by Bill Courier, who was just activated this week after being picked up from the Houston Oilers. So a 36-yard punt, no return. The Cleveland Browns have... Hopefully he's all right. He is a very, very important man in their offense. Sitting right next to another offensive player. I believe it was Ossie Newsom sitting right there next to him. First down for Brian Sutton. And he airs it out. He's got a man wide open. It's Calvin Hill up around midfield. And Hill got very deep into the New England secondary. And he made the reception for the first down. Rick Sanford is the man who made the stop, but Hill can catch the little flare pass out in the flat, or he can go downfield if he has to. 29 yards on that completion. And this team is not going to give up offensively. New England is kind of floating here with 542 left to go in the fourth quarter. But Cleveland snuck up on a lot of teams last year in the fourth quarter. Just shy of midfield, psyched to throw it again. Why didn't they do this earlier? People will be asking themselves. First down to Willis right, Adams, please. number 80. Number one draft choice last year has caught a couple of passes today, and Sipe has them on the move. All right, I'll tell you why. Number one, the score, 34 to 10. They're not going to score 24 points, I doubt, or New England feels they're not going to score 24 points in about five minutes. The other thing is, oh, tie score. New Orleans, uh, Erksleben with a 37-yard field goal. Now the score is tied. But anyway, secondly, the New England Patriot defensive backs are protecting the ground behind them not the ground in front of them. I knew the answer to the question. I just wanted to see if you did. From the 33 of New England, Sipe again with plenty of time to throw the ball. Has a man wide open. It's Calvin Hill to about the 12-yard line. He runs head on into number 48, Tim Fox, a free safety. But Cleveland's about to put another quick touchdown on the board. 20 yards on the completion from Sipe to Hill. Uh, you can see this right at the top of the screen. Rod Schote tries to take on Calvin Hill at the line of scrimmage, and uh, Calvin Hill just blows right by him. That's the same pass reception that was com completed a little bit ago to Calvin Hill. It's a very multi-talented offense, but they just have no defense. Last year, the Cleveland Browns offense scored 22 points a game, but they gave up 25 points a game. They didn't do it. 
Here's Zipe again in the end zone. Touchdown! How about that for a drive? Keith Wright, in his third year out of Memphis State, primarily the punted kickoff return man with a touchdown reception. And the Cleveland Browns have just whooped it down the field 11 yards on the pass from Sipe to right. Absolutely amazing. Good pass protection. And he's playing in replace of Dave Logan. He just beats Rick Sanford inside like he's not even standing there. I believe that's Keith Wright's first touchdown in the NFL. Could be. Speaking of touchdown passes, Bill Sims has thrown his fifth, count him, five for the second year phenom from Moorhead State. New York Giants 38, St. Louis 28. As Cockroft makes the extra point, here it's a 34-17 game. The Browns have cut the score in half. Brian Seip now 22 for 34, 233 yards and two touchdowns, but he's losing. In Foxborough, we've got 4.06 to play, and don't say it's over yet. It's a 34-17 game. Here we go again. And here's the onside attempt. They should have had it last time. Let's see whether they can do it this time. Whoops. No. Caught by New England, shy of the necessary 10 yards. Andy Johnson leaping in the air. A penalty marker is down. I don't think it went the necessary 10. Cleveland will get the ball. Or excuse me, New England will get the ball, though, because That's the, the ball did not go 10 yards. That's right. All right. Here's the stats for the two quarterbacks today. Sipe, 22 of 34, as you just said, Sam. 233 yards and two touchdowns. Grogan. 17 of 26, 277 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. That's, uh, what, 600 yards for two quarterbacks? It is. There's no, that's 500 yards for two quarterbacks. Offsides on the kicking team, decline, first down. 500 yards for the two quarterbacks, five touchdowns and one interception between them. The difference, and offensive it, stats are there. The difference, I repeat, Cleveland's defense. By the time this day is over, we'll be over 600 yards. I've got news for you. Spike will see the football again. From the 45 of the Cleveland Browns, the give is the Mosi Tatupu, the third year running back out of Southern California, the big Samoan, picking up three yards on the carry. It'll be second down seven. Cleveland gets a timeout. Well, they haven't stopped the clock, but they've called for a timeout. Now they know. Nope. Now they stop it. Well, the Steelers have still two timeouts remaining. Vegas Ferguson, oh, and a good effort. Mosey to two foot to the other side. Third down and one. A big first down play if New England wants to keep the ball, and they do. Foreman, Mr. Clutch, being driven back by Clinton Burrell, number 49, now by three over the Cardinals. And Buffalo, 17 to seven over Miami. The rookie Joe Cribbs, a two-yard run. That's an upset in the making. Uh-oh. Ferguson gets outside and he races to the 25 yard line and now as I think about that Miami Buffalo game if Buffalo wins Rogan <laughs> giving to Vegas first wondered why the Browns went with an offensive draft choice that didn't try to bolster their defense and when they picked up Joe Delamalur they released uh, Rich Dimmler a defensive lineman out of the University of Southern California who last year did a decent job in a replacement of Jerry Shirk well, those people are going to be out in droves. Wondering why the Cleveland Browns, knowing the strength of their offense and the weakness of their defense, stayed with the offense. Well, we're going to be leaving uh, immediately following this game, and so while I have a moment, let me take you to producer of NBC Football. is Don Olmeyer. Our coordinating producer is Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game produced by Sam Kirschman, directed by Lou Renoni, Technical Director Arnold Rand and the Associate Director Joe Michaels. Bob and I thank the four of you gentlemen for doing a whale of a job. And on a beautiful day in Foxborough, 34-17. The New England Patriots from the Cleveland 23-yard line and the two touchdowns that Brian Seif put on the board late in his ball game could mean something to Cleveland come next Sunday against Houston. Rogan, to my surprise, has gone all the way at quarterback. Here's Andy Johnson. John Hanna leading the way. But Clay Matthews sneaked inside and made the stop. As I mentioned earlier, Bob, Marshall Harris and Elvis Franks have played quite a bit of defensive left end. 
Shirk, I think, went for most of the first half, but I don't recall having seen him a lot in the second half. And we have had no injury report on Jerry Shirk. I talked to him before the game, and he did say that he was still suffering a little bit of achiness in his knee, that knee that he had, staph infection. But uh, hopefully he is not hurt. Clock continues to run. The Browns have a timeout remaining, I do believe, but they don't elect to stop it at the moment. Nope, they're out of timeouts, I guess. They have none. So Grogan has it all his own way. A minute eight to go. Andy Johnson caught from behind by Charlie Hall, number 59, the 10-year veteran out of Houston, and the clock will continue to wind down. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is TV3, WKYC in Cleveland. Well, for the Cleveland Browns, next week it'll be home to the Houston Oilers. Apparently, the Oilers on their way to a loss at Pittsburgh today. Meanwhile, the New England Patriots next week will host the Atlanta Falcons. And coming off this victory, it should be fairly sweet for Ron Earhart and company. And this should be the last play of the game. Sand over and Bob Trumpy winding down a great New England victory. But the Browns will be heard from before the year is out. You can mark my word on that. Mosey Tatupu carrying for the final play of the game. Sam Ritigliano walking across the field to meet his former assistant coach here in New England, a man whom he coached with under Chuck, Barbe, uh, Chuck Fairbanks, Ron Earhart.